The eyes of Texas are here at Texas Motor Speedway as we get ready to go green once again in NR Night in America. Originally, this stream was supposed to take place all the way back in Tuesday, but as so many of you know, there were issues, there were problems, a lot of things didn't work when they should have worked. So, Enter Night in America has decided to go back to back on streaming. That's right, we stream tonight. We stream Sunday night. And we said that Texas race we had on Tuesday deserves to be a lot cooler, a lot more excitement there to go ahead and unleash. And you know what? There's no better time than the nighttime. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR, as we get ready to rock and roll for this Saturday night edition of NR Night in America. 43 drivers have headed out to Texas, out in Fort Worth, as we get ready to rock and roll. Four laps of qualifying, 60 laps of racing. What's the difference between this and then? The nighttime is where it goes down. The sparks will fly just once more. The Alabama 500 entry list has been set out. You wanna see who's racing? Check the community tab or join our Discord. Link to that is in the description below. And all night, you're gonna hear some new sounds as we'll be getting ready to test the new audio for that event. It's gonna be a blast, the Alabama 500 from Talladega Super Speedway, live this coming up Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. The Iceberg and I will be up in the booth. You'll see some paint schemes rolling around this racetrack. Well, the overlays you all know and love are very much back. As a matter of fact, before every single show, and including before the e-ticket, we're doing nothing but tests to make sure it is that high quality you're used to seeing. Well, we did go to Texas last Tuesday with a very unique finish, but one thing was proven. This track is racy, more racy than you may consider due to uh, the reputation Texas Motor Speedway has had in the past. But well, you're guaranteed one thing, good oil action, maybe some tempers flaring, and with this Tuesday night edition, we can be looking at four night races all in a row. You want race five, that's gonna be 300 likes, and you, the viewers, will get to vote. Something even more exciting about that is the fact that you all will be helping us make Sunday night's schedule for NR Night in America. All the speed week, all the excitement, heading into the next e-ticket event. You're a member of the channel? Spam those icons down below. We have a new green flag icon and so much more. So when we drop the hammer just one more time, we wanna see the entire chat painted green. This is it. This is now. This is NR Night in America. Makeup Night in America as well. You're watching Drew Jew into the inside lane in that 38. Now for the Alabama 500, he will not be driving this paint scheme. He'll be very much in a different looking car. That would be a Chevrolet. That would be the HendrickCars.com number five. But it's not the one for the Darrington Woodworking Florida 500. No, sir. It's the Speed Racer five. And you're not going to want to go ahead and miss it. It's fast. It's exciting. We sat down with Drew Jew and Daniel Mosteller for a quick interview after the Darrington Woodworking 4 to 500. You want to hear that? You may want to go in and tune into Countdown to Green for the next e ticket event, that being the Alabama 500. There's a lot to look forward to. There's a lot of excitement in the air with just about one minute left here of qualifying. We lock in, we look around. 43 drivers enter, 43 drivers will race. We capped it off at 43 to test out the new light, night lighting. So we have to ask you all down the chat below, what do you think? William Schmidt down on the inside lane. He's one of the drivers that told us about this lighting package and we should give it a shot. Well, he's downstairs. He looks to be starting up inside the top five. William Schmidt, also a driver that I believe will mostly fly under the radar heading into the next e-ticket event. Jerju, a Doug New Bigging, you got White up there in third. That's Matthew C. White. Benjamin Walker, also known as Aiden Walker. William Schmidt, Yahir Rodriguez, Jacob Close, Sean Rowe. And you're watching Ethan Vietbu roll around this racetrack. Gavin Addison back to 10th, Contreras in 11, Malone in 12. Makeup streams are interesting. This allows drivers that may not usually run up front 
have the opportunity to get in the limelight because we all know how it works. If you go ahead and try something great, if you go out there and run very well, you're gonna have an opportunity to be on the big show. And so many were asking, hey, why was I not on the e-ticket event? Uh, look at my i-rating, look at my i-racing stats. It's about your NR Night in America stats. It's about how good you can run within the community. Every driver has a story. Every driver has something interesting about him heading into an e-ticket. And there's 43 stories where only one will have that conclusion. It's going to be a blast, but until then, it's just the countdown to the 2024 Alabama 500. Drew Jua, Douglas New Biggie, and they're going to line up one, two. Matthew C. White will be back there in third. We line up, we grid up, as we get ready to go green from Texas. I want to say hello to everyone watching back home, and we're hoping you're enjoying this Saturday night edition of NR Night in America. Now, Saturday nights, they won't be usually live for NR Night. That will mainly come in the form of the YouTube short streams of myself broadcasting at local short tracks like the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. But with this being a makeup stream, we said, hey, let's give it our all. Let's have some fun tonight. And let's see what they've got. Texas, they go back at it again. Last win here, that was Michael Mitchum. And he did a great job. He burned the house down. He was there when it mattered the most. And such a weird finish. No one was expecting it for it to be a time constraint race. It ended up being that. And very quickly we realized every lap was feeling like the last. Well, due to poor production on our end we said we have to end the stream after race number two tonight it's all about the racing from race one to race four maybe even race number five if we get 300 likes at the conclusion of this race we're going to talk with the race winner and he's going to help us figure out where we go for race number one sunday night and then maybe race two maybe race three down in the chat below continue to give us car track combos because we are going to construct a beautiful schedule for tomorrow night's edition. Ladies and gentlemen, they line up on pit road. We're gonna do just a couple tests, but this is the moment you waited for. Let's go in and say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for throttle up. So glad to have you all with us. So thankful for the opportunity to be streaming on this Tuesday night as we get ready to go green. Aiden Walker lined up, ready to get at it. Other drivers lined in as well. We'll get the one to go next time by as we get ready to go green flag racing. Drew Jew is going to be one of the top drivers to keep an eye on before we drop the hammer. He's always been strong. He's always been consistent. Can he be resilient? That's been a big talking point leading into the Alabama 500. What do you have and can you give it your all before we go green flag racing? New Big and White Walker, they're lined in as well. Ready to go ahead and bring the action. Matthew C.Y. has never won a race in NR Night in America. That could change tonight. The Atbu back there in ninth, Will in seventh. Schmidt back in fifth. It's the one to go this time by will be full saw down into turn number one. Ford Chevrolet row one. Chevy Chevy, that's back to row number two. Toyota Chevrolet row number three. This is where you get excited. This is where all of the this butterflies the you could have, they need to step out the door. Because once you grab that first gear, and you have to keep on grabbing them until you find your fifth. And then it's full on, two wide, three wide, maybe even four wide, as the eyes of Texas are looking upon this great field. 
Let's get ready to go green. Crowd on their feet, see Drew Jua, he is blinking on the inside. He could be given a penalty unless he fixes that. Keep an eye on what goes down. New Biggie on the outside, Jua on the bottom, Walker, Schmidt all lined in, and they finally say, let's go at it. Pace car makes a hard left on the pit road. And just as we did on Tuesday, let's light the fuse from Texas Motor Speedway. New Biggie, top sign with Walker. Have the edge out in front to one and two. Jua hangs tough on the inside. Now you don't want to go all into that third groove. It's very icy up there. Keep an eye on these guys. It's mostly going to be the top two on the inside. New Biggie holds tough in lane two. Slides the rear end, hand over fist, saves it off, exit. Drew Jewel will lead lap one, and Matthew White is right on the rear, climbing the banking of one. Look for it. Peeking. And here comes Schmidt with Rodriguez. That's the battle for third. Will and fourth, Sean Rowe. Hanging tough on the outside lane. And Schmidt's gonna be very smart here coming down off exit. He knows he doesn't need to go out there and be as aggressive as possible. He's considered the closer for the reason. He knows how to manage the tires and take the opportunities when it's presented. Here comes White to the back end of Jua. Back to turn three. Matthew C. White has never won a race in NR. Drew Jua. He's won plenty. Ford, Chevy, Chevy, Toyota, that's the fast four. Jua locks off another one. William Schmidt waits in the wing, trying to find a move on Ethan Vietbu. Stuck door to door, that's gonna be with Douglas Newbigging. Dog right off the jump. Found a struggling situation on the outside lane. The big thing about Texas is this is one of the highest poly tracks that you're going to find on iRacing. So internet issues are going to be very, very common. Now we did a lot of testing, a lot of stress testing before we went into this event, mainly for the Alabama 500. But we even found a couple situations where we're like, man, it's going to be interesting. Just got to keep an eye on it. Sputtermouth dropping the Champions Club membership. Very thankful for that. He'll be once again becoming a member of this channel. White is in second, Jew has held that lead, but Chevrolet is looking for a switch and in a quick manner. This time by, 55 laps to go. Sean Rowe. There in fourth has caught Rodriguez. Matthew White sneaked to the inside, looks topside, coming down off two. The old switch up now, if you just keep Jew up into that inside, could be able to take the air off that back spoiler, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. Matthew White leads at the line, the race for the lead to turn one. We've not seen a lot of pinning. That second lane is so crucial. If you can force the driver on the bottom into a big mistake. Yahir Rodriguez, Sean Rowe, they're toe-to-toe -to -toe for third. Battle for the lead has not stopped. Jua inside will not give it up without a fight. 53 laps to go from Texas. Rodriguez in fourth. Has conceded the spot. But oh boy, they've caught up in the top two and in a quick hurry, see Jua on the inside, still holding on to it. He's not giving White any advantage on entry or on exit. The only problem is that fight for the lead is soon to be a big cluster for the lead. You're looking at nearly five drivers under a big moss pit going for just one spot. And Sean Rowe will take full advantage, three wide to the bottom. Gets one, wants two, still won't get it, they're stuck three wide. 
Arose doing everything he can. Now he's ping ponging off guys in the middle. Four Toyota Chevy three manufacturers at last across the line. Give it to Matthew C. White on the outside lane. Don't look now, but that top 10 is all within a second of each other. Three wide up front from Texas. The crowd's on their feet. Addison in fourth. Where does he roam? You can't make four wide work, as in the fact that you can get up to four wide, but I just don't think you'll get the runoff exit. The Ekbu on the outside passes Rodriguez. They're still stuck. Three wide for the top spot. Quill in seventh. Schmidt in eighth. Rush shower from Fort Worth, Texas. Toyota nose out in front to turn two. Five under a blanket. Viet Vu to the outside. Oh, he's got a nice run on through. Addison just could not get the run to the center. Matthew C. White walks it in. Top of the board. But Sean Rowe has shown to be great with the next gen. Lunges to the inside of one and two. He's got a good opportunity. Can't get the drive off exit. White breaks the drop, looks to the bottom, back to the outside. Roll tucked in, nose to tail, Vietbu. Trying to paint the white line. Jacob Quill up the six. Young guns, underdogs versus veterans alike with 49 left to go under the lights. This is what you're talking about right here. And you look back to that last stream and you say, wow, production, what was up with it? But this is just a huge comeback story. The drivers came back. They said, let's get put, go ahead and put on a good show. And oh boy, are they doing it. Three wide for consistent amount of laps. And you could be looking at a first time winner there in Matthew White. Sean Rowe, on the other hand, the driver for PBR has no problem in taking that away. He's tucked in on the bottom. Ethan Vietbu. There in the four. Jua inside, battle for second. And Drew is such a great driver. He's gonna be driving number five for the Alabama 500 come this Friday. We all know what happened in the Darrington Woodworking Florida 500. That iconic photo finish. One of the most iconic races now in any e-ticket event. He's coming back with the five. He's coming back with Chevrolet. And he's looking for redemption at Talladega. If you're a true Jewel fan, you're going to want to be strapped in at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, come Friday night. Right now, it's toe-to-toe -to -toe at Texas. To the inside, wheel-to-wheel, Sean Rowe looking for a squeeze. Oh, Drew lost the rear end, coming off exit. Sutherland back in 18. Let's talk about him because he was putting up some great speed there in practice. He was up inside the top five, top 10. He didn't get a great qualifying effort all the way back in 30th, but he has since cracked the top 20. Someone to seriously keep an eye out for, not just in this race, but throughout the rest of the night. Jacob Malone, he's up the 16th. He almost got his first win at Gateway a couple races, or should we say a couple streams ago. Not the Gateway Oval, but the Gateway Road Course. One to look forward to. Daniel Mosteller, his iconic Coca-Cola machine, is looking all green. Now, I thought green was supposed to be a bad luck color in racing. But for Demos, he is taking it to a whole new level. He says, nah, that's just a conspiracy. Let's go out there and race. Now, this is not also his scheme for the e-ticket event. He'll be running the Coca-Cola Cherry car, which is very reminiscent to his iconic Coca-Cola all-red scheme that he won in the 4 to 500. But for him, he says, let's just have some fun with it. An iconic scheme, an iconic look. Let's just change the colors up as we go. Eladon Contreras, he's up to 11, had a great finish in the 4 to 500, but was really a no-show throughout the first 90% of the race. His idea, seat time, seat time, seat time. Even if it's on intermediate, it's on a short track because you never know when things can strike. Already seen a lot of guys get loose down off exit. It's an ice skating ring out there when you go ahead and work your way to the center of the corners. Aladon Contreras says, if there's a wreck, I gotta learn how to avoid it because you never know when it's gonna strike. 
at Talladega. Drew Drew has found his way around Sean Rowe and has worked into the second position. Gavin Addison, Michael Mitchell trying to defend Texas. He got the win on Tuesday. Was very thankful that stream did not get private. And for the ones that did not know, the Tuesday stream, when published, was supposed to be a members only stream. We said, you know what, let's just keep it up. Because at the end of the day, we know we're coming back Saturday and Sunday with fight and fury. Speaking of fight, Drew Jua, he's closed the gap. Look for the lap for lap on the bottom. Was seven back, six back, five lap, or five back, just a couple laps to go. He's now down to a 3-7. Matter of fact, he's down to a 15, and he's on the horse of white. Looks to the outside. Ford Chevrolet dogfight to turn one. Goes for a wide arc. His idea is just to get the runoff exit. White's got to be thinking about clearing. Couldn't get it done. Jua outside lane. White could not hold on to the race car, and Ford is back top of the board from Texas. This is a great race, and that's the big thing about it. We knew coming in tonight, some viewers and drivers were going to say, oh, Texas, A, didn't we just do this, and B, Texas, really? We always say, just because you have a certain opinion about it in the real world doesn't mean you're not going to get a great show on sim. One of the best car track combos you will get is Xfinity Texas. Even the next gens have put on an absolutely fantastic show. Look at Schmidt to the bottom. That's a Viet Vu Toyota. Getting some shine in the light up to the sixth place position. Sneaks one, wants two. They're on Gavin Addison. Won't get it. Sean Rowe under fire for the 20. They don't look now, but Michael Mitchum is fighting tooth and nail there with White. Mitchum won Texas in the day. He wants to get it done under the lights to the inside of a blinking number seven. I think White's got to concede this spot right here. I wouldn't even attempt to switch back. Right in line, maybe watch what the Toyota is able to do. And Mitchum will say thank you very much. This top two may be the drivers that duel it out for a win. Toyota in the 38, Ford in the 38. Drew Jewel leads by about three car lanes with 36 laps to go. You're not guaranteed a lot of cautions here as well. That's the cool thing about it. And you look all the way through this field and you say, Daniel Botafuco, what is he doing back there in 15? Well, not a good qualifying effort. 42nd. But works his way through the field. He's up to the 15th place spot. Eladon Contreras. Another one. He's hovered in the top 15, but really hasn't moved as much. He's now back to the 11th place position, fighting Jacob Quill for a top 10 spot. Emos, Austin Mitchell into the grass. Look for a run. Look for a move. There's Mitchell. 2-6 back to Drew Jua. He wants it and wants it in a hurry. But will he get it? That's the real question. 35 laps to go in the race. Vietbu sits in seventh. Max Swearingen on the outside. Spencer Burns on the bottom. Mitchum is there, closing to a 2-5. Three wide for position. The battle for seventh. Spinning Spencer Burns. Clocks the inside wall. Gets it back, refire, no, goes for a loop. Uh, he's not gonna get a caution, that's a single car spin. And we will stay green. That's the thing about NR9, if you're coming in, watching from how it is in person, yes, that will most likely be a caution. Went single car, it's off the racing surface, out of the racing groove. We stay green, why? Because long green flag runs produce great racing action. Because some drivers aren't saving tires. Others very much are just trying to maintain pace. 32 to go this time by. White in third, Sean Rowe. Inside of Addison, Toyota on Toyota. 
Might as well make it three TRDs under a blanket because William Schmidt slams the back end of the 20. Mitchum 2 1. He's to the back end there at Jua. And a lot of times have severely fallen off. And with 32 laps to go, a lot of eyes have now been set on the top two. Big thing is Michael Mitchum, he's on track to make contender on iRacing this year. Maybe one of the, dri the youngest drivers to do so. Battle for the lead. Mitchum on the bottom. Jua in the middle, squeezes on the Toyota. Crowd on their feet. White Samba to close in, back to a 6-2. 31 laps to go. Down to a 30, Mitchum inside. Goes for the lunge, Jua, daylight now downstairs. The switchback, move for the lead. Mitchum powers on the outside. As long as he doesn't get loose down off X, he should lock it in. And very much does. Toyota top of the board. 29 to go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to halfway. We've had nothing but passes for the lead. And Michael Mitchum has set eyes on victory lane as long as it goes green. Big news, it might not. A lot of drivers have been struggling with grip, speed, all in between. Austin Mitchell to the bottom. That's a valid on Contreras. Five drivers under a blanket for position. Now this is going to be for eight, but you got to watch out for Daniel Buttafuoco. Dan's the man at making things work. Looks topside. Couldn't find something there. Mitchell's able to go ahead and shut the door. Oh, squeeze. Jacob Quill. Way, way wide, three wide now for position. Dan to the bottom. Mitchell in the middle. Sean Wall, trouble spin. The eight machine around Daniel Moss, still are involved in the costume wave. And that happened right when Sean Rowe came to pit road. And he will be the big winner on the case. I believe he got to the outside wall, or it could have been a scheduled stop. When they cycle around, Sean Rowe will be your race leader. Mosteller went for a loop, but a Fuko into Mitchell. And you see the caution flag for the first time. Whoa. I knew things are going to get exciting, but the race in action has been peak on this Saturday night. Let's take a look back and see what unfolded. He just got to the inside there, Mitchell. Demos Walker both had to go in the grass. And once the nine got sideways with oncoming traffic, that's what we had to throw, and that's the big thing. If you see a car sideways, oncoming traffic, then you have to throw a caution, right? Including if it's up inside the top 10. The good news is really nobody made contact with the Austin Mitchell machine, but for Daniel Buttafuoco, I mean, he just got right into him. And looking at the inside, I mean, I don't think Mitchell came down. I think Dan just came up, but you already see the rear end. Sliding wide on the eight, so I think at some point he was going to go around. For Demos. Lucky to not hit anything or have anyone hit him. Bit road, it's wide open. Giorgio in for service. Right side's up, left side's coming up next time by. He's blinking, he's struggling with internet. Keeping an eye on it. Aiden Walker, he's in a stall as well. Coming off pit road, Michael Mitchum wins it. It's going to be White, Schmidt, maybe Jua, who will actually fall down the order. I'm surprised Sean Rowe is not where he would intend to. I think Drew Jua logged out. He's back in that 21st position. He most went for a slide. Vietnam is now up there in 12. We 
got a race on our hands for sure. 25 laps to go if you're just coming on in we say hello we say welcome yes racing at texas again and i'm telling you the broadcast is a thousand times better than it was on tuesday the racing a thousand times better than it was on tuesday this is one you're not going to want to miss kenyan glick there is the 99 is sean rowe i believe he may have been was he held one lap down we're looking and peeking to see where they're going to show him they have him in the 28th position yes one lap down so he'll go back around and get his lap back Mitchum will be lined up in the second position while other drivers make their way on pit road for quick adjustments because it's go time and we are ready to go green flag racing ladies and gentlemen it's the one to go from Texas Motor Speedway Bro will get his lap back wide on the outside Mitchum on the bottom. So even though that caution came out, Rowe was held one lap down when they cycle through. And it's going to put him in a bad, bad scenario. Gavin Austin going around to get his lap back. But Afuco, Contreras, Quill, Vietvu have all lined up two by two in preparation for the restart. Let's do it. Let's get ready to go back green. Crowd on their feet. A beautiful night for racing in NR9 in America. One caution in the books. Everyone else lines up for the restart. Schmidt on the bottom. Addison on the outside. Swerge and Contreras, Betafuco, Vietbu have lined up wheel to wheel to give it another go. 23 laps to do it from Texas. Rewind back half of the field. Single file, mostly up front. Max Swergen now stuck toe to toe with the 20. Spinning, wrecking in the back. One, two, multiple machines now around, and the caution's going to wave Mosteller. Two for two on incidents, and that may cost them. And earlier in the broadcast, I said usually green cars are bad luck. I think you can now attest to that. As Michael Mitchum will hold on to the race lead. Now, we had a wreck in the back. We had a wreck up front. We haven't had a battle. We're going to have to go look around and figure out what happened. Let's we'll start with up front, Max Swergen. Turning the 20. Now, Aiden Walker avoided it, but not the nine, and Mosteller goes for a big slide. The Lex, Nicholas Martinez up into the outside wall. Back out the field, you saw it before. Spencer Burns. Trying to make something work. Cody Workman. There with Carson Freeman. Burns outside wall, and that's all she wrote. Second caution out from Texas Motor Speedway. Daniel Buttafuco has now worked up to the fourth position. As William Schmidt, Matthew White, Michael Mitchum have now lined up back nose to tail. We're around the 20 to go mark. If you're just filing on in, we say hello and welcome. What a race we've had so far. Three wide for the lead. It felt like for maybe what, three, maybe four laps. And we will get ready for a restart. So the 20 machine of Addison goes around off Max Swerge and will be giving Max the one to go. And you can see Michael Mitchum, did he just lag out of a race? Looking, waiting, not exactly sure what happened with the Michael Mitchum machine. 
just pulled to the inside. Oh, there he is. And we said it, this type of track, it's the highest poly oval on iRacing. So you're gonna have frame issues. You're gonna have drivers stuck with problems. In case of Michael Mitchum, he's just hoping the equipment he has will take him to the checkered flag. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time, the one to go from Texas. We get ready to go green, sputter mount for the Champions Club membership says, let's go. Let's get ready to go back green. Lined up, we're ready to go green. It's gonna be a tough run. All the way back to the start finish line. Pace car, the hard left on the pit road. Toyota Chevrolet for the first two rows, 19 laps remaining from the Texas Motor Speedway. Matthew White, blink out on the outside, sputter mouth, gifting five memberships. But Afuko from 42nd to 5th, looking for position to turn three. Oh no, I think it's gonna be very tough to beat that 38. Matthew C. White has led 15 of the 42 laps. William Schmidt, 0 for 43, but knows he just needs to lead the last. And he's a driver that's on everyone's radar, really heading to the Alabama 500. He's called the closer, and there's one track he need to close it out from. It's Dega spinning Josh Kenyon. Goes for a slide, everyone else avoids. Battle for second. Zola Herring, 11th and 12th. Vievu is right on the doorstep of Aladon Couture's. To the outside. Oh, I don't think he's gonna make a work off exit. Schmidt is there, 17 the difference. Gotta make it work, he's gotta be smart. He wants to find a way around Mitchum without tearing the tires up. There's one thing you gotta worry about and that's that 38 machine going ahead and pulling away. Dan to fourth, Contreras in fifth. The lights are shining bright here in Fort Worth, Texas. 15 to go in the race. White to block. But Afuko the lunge to turn one. He's got to look to the inside right here if he wants to make it work the three. Hangs tough, looks top side. Dan, the lunge into three is going to lock in the third position. Schmidt, two, two back, coming off four. Fourteen to go. Now you're going to see a big shuffle of the deck here if Michael Mitchum can't hold on to that spot. Schmidt may get first dibs at him, but I'm telling you, Buttafuoco is on and in a hurry. Half a second back. Thirteen to go from Texas. 19, he knows he just can't stay nose to tail because of how the next gen produces the dirty air. 
But if he can get half a click higher or half a click lower, he will make up time. 2-5, two, 2-6 two, the difference. We had a wheel towards the back half of the field. Daniel Buttafuco in third, White in fourth. Contreras back in fifth. 12 to go. Oh no, I think Dan's gonna have a better opportunity to close in to Schmidt than Schmidt closing in to Mitchum. Unless Mike Mitchum is just tearing it up. And he's putting down some great lap times. Run to the outside. Schmidt had to get out of the gas. Dan is there, 4-8. Look at a 4-7 of the difference. Top five under a second. Now, when is he gonna switch up? That's the big question. Top side, inside. Does Dan get the Schmidt before Schmidt gets the Mitchell? Two Toyotas, a Chevy, and put one more bow tie in it for the fast four. Ford is nowhere to be seen. So all the way back to Viet Vu in ninth. Final 10 laps of the race. White to the outside, Contreras on the bottom. Side by side for the fourth position. The thing is, the second Schmidt catches up to Mitchum, it's gonna allow every car in this group to be reeled back in. So it's either Schmidt makes quick work of Mitchum, or if they hang tough and battle too long, Daniel Buttafuoco will be right there waiting. 2-7 back, 9 to go. Contreras, quick work of White. The Michigan Merchant, that's what they call him. I think Dan's going to get to Schmidt way before Schmidt could ever get to Mitchum, and we're going to have a battle for second. Michael Mitchum is driving the wheels off of it. Eight to go last Tuesday. He won at Texas in a time-shortened race. Today, it's three drivers going for the top spot. Schmidt topside, lays over, gives Buttafuoco the spot. And that's etiquette right there. He saw that the 13 was quicker than him. Jumps out of the way. Seven laps to go this time by. Can Chevy beat Toyota? Dan, 3-5 back. Mitchum, the work to 1-2. and two. I think this is where Buttafuga puts it all on the table. Not the run he wanted off to. Still about even. And in the wake of the 38 up in front of him. Some drivers lagged out due to internet issues. Others were involved in unfortunate incidents. But with six laps to go, it's two drivers separated by three car lanes. And still about that 3-7, 3-6 back. Track position, we didn't see it work at all the entire race. Maybe up until this moment. Five to go. Battle for third, William Schmidt, and on Contreras. Matthew White fanning out to turn one. I think Buttafuoco is one of the smartest drivers that have ever taken to the track in NR Night in America. He's cool, calm, collective, and the word of the week, the word of the month, resilient. Just has to lead one. Mitchum has gotten 24 of the 56 laps. Buttafuoco 0 for 56. He came from 42nd to be in this position. Four to go. Three the difference. If you're down within a two, if you're down within a one, you might be able to make a lunge to three and four. But once again, Texas has different break, uh, banking styles on each side of this track. Now, I'm not saying you go flat out down to three and four, but you can definitely carry a lot of momentum on entry. 
So if Dan's going to make up time, it's going to have to come through one and two. Black car may play a difference. Mitchum leads, but Afuko, he's closing in, but time's running out. Two laps to go from Texas. Oh, he's there. Big news of the day, he caught him, but can you pass him? Mitchum defends down to one and two, hugs the white line. But Afuko has Chevrolet riding with him. It's going to be make or break. Two manufacturers, two different drivers. One lap to settle it. Sonoblanca, one to go from Texas. Mitchum, the wide arc to one. Dan is there. Does he use the bumper? Final drive. Three and four. But Afuko with the heave. Not in time. Michael Mitchum's going to go back to back and shuts him down from Fort Worth, Texas. He won in the day. He wins under the lights, but Afuko comes home second, Schmidt third, White fourth, Contreras in fifth, and that's the great race in action you love to see in NR Night in America. How about it? What a ride, what a finish. Schmidt P3, Workman comes home 13th, Zola 11th. And that's how it's done. Feeling victories all year long. Michael Mitchum celebrates by burning it down on the start finish line. And we will go talk to your race winner. He's been one of the best drivers in the next gen. And what's great about this community, we always have different styles of racing consistently. And he has shown to just be on the ball from the drop of the green flag to the drop of the checkered flag. Let's go talk to your race winner before we head to round number two. Let's go to the Music City. It's Truck Night in America from the Nashville Super Speedway. We'll go ahead and pack the bags and head on out there. That will be in just a matter of moments, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, let's go talk to your race winner. What a race. What a ride. Mitchum, it's the John. You got a copy. Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, that's awesome. Back to back. Hey, you could have you, so many were adding an asterisk on the Texas race of the day, but I wouldn't have had asterisks to that at all because every lap was the last lap. You come back here and you shut them down under the lights. How does it feel to go back to back in this state? Man, it feels awesome. Like that, that was a really fun race. Um, I've raced Daniel for a while. Uh, one of my teammates at Race PI, and uh, I know his talent, so I know he had. Um, the talent to come and race me for it, and uh, he he definitely put it to me. I mean, I was nervous, but um, we we were just able to stick out there. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, I came from I guess 22nd. I think I started because I just I didn't qualify well at all. I mean, I just qualified horribly, and uh, didn't give up. Kept it, kept the wheel straight, and. Uh, we came out and won it. Let's talk about tonight. Clearly a makeup stream after what we had last Tuesday. We're back. We're excited, but we have not made the schedule yet for the next stream. Where should we go race one? I know a lot of you drivers are saying, let's do Atlanta Super Speedway with the Gen 6. Um, I mean, I want to be opposed to that. I'm not the biggest Super Speedway fan, but I mean, if that's what the fans want to see, then do it. Well, let's go ahead and ask him down the chapel. What what car track combo should we do Sunday night as well? Leading into an e-ticket event, you leading into a big e-ticket. 
I'm not saying you're the favorite, but you definitely brought the world by storm after the last couple of races from Auto Club, Michigan, even Darrington Woodworking for the 4 to 500. You maybe do, and you may be a favorite. Might be. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to try. I'd like to get me any ticket. I'm pretty sweet. No, it's going to be a lot of fun. You want to say that to anyone back at home? For sure, yeah. My mom and my dad uh, give me everything I have. Also, um, racebi.com and 1A Coffee just get me where I am. Uh, best setups there is, so go over there if you want the best setups. Um, also, all the fans watching, thank you for being here. I uh, hope I put on a good show. And, uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying. What was harder to win, this one or uh, Tuesday? I'm going to say Tuesday just because, like, the uncertainty. I, yeah, and, and also just, like, we, me and uh, Thurston were so equal on tires that, like, it could have been either of us. So it was really just who wanted it more. Um, this one, I kind of had that lead, and it, it was uh, – a bit more of a breeze, you know? Well, let's talk about Nashville Super Speedway. It's unique. It's different. It's not like anything we've had in the past. What's it about that track that is so difficult, including on the truck side? Because personally, I look forward to Nashville trucks every year. I, I've been in Nashville now the last couple of years for the Super Speedway side. And trucks, at least to me, are one of the most exciting things to watch there. I think it's kind of an intermediate that acts like a short track. Like... You gotta be you gotta be really technical with with how you run that track, kind of like you would at your Martinsville or Richmond. Like it looks like it's gonna be something like Texas, but it's it's not. It's not even close. So um, it's just it's a really technical track, and you, you gotta you gotta know what you're doing to run a track like that. Gotta ask you this one: Do you win the e-ticket event this Friday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, the Alabama 500? <laughs> We're certainly gonna try to. That'd be pretty sweet. Oh, hey, it's going to be a lot of fun. Guess what? Session's up. Passwords IDK. Good luck, my man. Sounds good. Thank you. That's Michael Mitchum, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Ramos. We're going to bring him back to our studios in Nashville, Tennessee, as we get ready to rock. This has been a heck of a night of racing. What a comeback when it comes to the fact of the product that has been put on display tonight from the viewers to the drivers to everyone alike. We're so glad to have you all with us heading into the next e-ticket event. And once again, if you did tune in Tuesday, apologies. That was not what we wanted production-wise. But I'm so glad that we're back. I'm so glad that we're looking at possibly getting race five. 300 likes. We get it, ladies and gentlemen. Just 200 away. And then we're back this Sunday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. We look to also be back Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central before the e-ticket event what do you guys uh enjoy about those in-person streams how about that recently and there will be another one next saturday at the end of the darrington woodworking four to five hundred oh check that at the end of the alabama 500 i have to go to bed quickly because i gotta be up in the morning to call racing at the nashville fairgrounds speedway it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm really excited for it but the big thing is the fact that I've gotten the okay to stream in person to the YouTube Shorts. We're going to do it all year. It was exciting. It was fun to watch. 5.7 thousand tuned into a one-hour stream. We're talking a one-hour stream. That's all it was. And I also got the okay to do more races minus just the Pro Late models. So we'll probably throw some limiteds in there. I know Mother's Day weekend I'll have, if I'm not mistaken, Arca. Pro late models and street stocks all back to back to back. They'll be live on the YouTube channel. It's a great time to be around here. You got the virtual races. You got the in-person races. This is it. This is now. This is NR Night in America. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR. If you're looking to race Nashville Super Speedway, look up my last name on the iRacing hosted. It's Ramos, and the password is IDK. Repeat, password is IDK. Okay, for the uh, the IDK player YouTube channel, as you all know, and the uh, irony cap is off due to this being a makeup stream. We know there wasn't a lot of promotion heading into this. All the promotion and uh, look towards was for the e-ticket event. Sunday, we are going to be back. Tuesday, we want to be back. We want to continue to keep you guys at the edge of your seat, talking to guys leading into the next e-ticket event. It's going to be a fun, fun time indeed. Well... We haven't been to Nashville Super Speedway in quite some time. It's been a good, good, lengthy uh, leave, should we say. But the cool thing about this track is when it first came out on iRacing, it was 2021. 
And we did it all the time. Uh, Josh Berry, NASCAR Cup Series driver, raced his first ever NR Night in America race here. They, but that was with the Gen 6 all the way back in October of 21. And then all of a sudden we realized that there's other tracks we'd like to go to. So we had National Super Speedway kind of come in, in and out here and there, but it really never lost its love for the trucks. And there's just something about it. Some say it's single groove on the bottom, it's tough to pass. You can make those arguments, but at the same time, it's still good racing with the trucks. We don't even know how it stays that way. We also like to check lighting. This is a big test. Tonight's is a big test for multiple systems making sure we are good to go because come Friday night we want to show off the best racing and the best product let's get ready to ride I believe Nick Lights has joined us NASCAR Truck Series driver did Nick race last night I believe he did I know Connor Jones race for sure is the Connor Jones in there on Discord server you never know who you guys are going to see you want to join our Discord server keep up to date on everything in our night in America? Link to that is in the description below. You'll get all the schedules, what we're doing. You're going to talk to real life drivers. Be able to talk to drivers on the sim side in the mosh pit. We've had truck series drivers going there, Xfinity series drivers, pro late models, super late models. It's a vast, vast community of nearly 3,000 members. So go ahead and give it a shot. Click the link and once again, in the announcement staff, always updating you on schedules or different ideas we do have. Well, the schedule tonight is vast and exciting, but the big thing about this is we're headed trackside for Nashville Super Speedway qualifying. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime from Middle Tennessee. Let's get it done. 43 drivers, 43 truckers. Rolling its way to Nashville. Matthew C. White has lined up in the 66. Frank Corley. Matthew Ponte. Matthew Ponte, should we say? Matthew Ponte. Austin Mitchell. Charles Rue. Bryce Benton. Nick Lights just talked about him. So excited to have Nick race. He's always been a great driver in NR9. He always hung out with us. Now, I do have to ask you all this. Sometimes the viewers can override certain things about the schedule. Y'all don't like where we're going next. So the plan is to go to New Smyrna with the Xfinity Series. But some drivers said, oh, we don't have that car track combo. Can you save it for another night? And a night that we would most likely have. As you guys know, we did have a community event at New Smyrna. We've been trying to go back there. Another car track combo we used to do a lot was the Xfinity Series at New Smyrna Speedway. So should we move race four up to race three and have you all vote on race four? What do you guys think of that? Because we could skip the New Smyrna race. Go ahead and put the super late models at phoenix up to race three you all vote on race number four best part you still get to vote on race number five if we hit 300 likes yaya rodriguez james bud rolling around the race track as well as we get ready to go green flag racing danny switzer truther Benton. Sanders, I love this scheme. I asked Lane, I was like, can you make this truck? Because we are having a community event with the trucks at Myrtle Beach very, very soon. And he was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And oh boy, did it come out beautifully. If you guys want to go check out Lane Sanders' paint schemes on Trading Paints, just look him up, Lane Sanders. He makes a lot of great 2001 paint schemes. He made this beautiful truck, Red Horse Racing. You know what, Lane may be driving that truck come the Myrtle Beach 400. You will not want to miss it. No Talladega. We have a Talladega event coming up this Friday for 500 miles. We're gonna have you wait on it. So many great votes, so many great questions. Left side of your screen, you see who was qualified where, Aiden Walker will not be in the Alabama 500. He has a race at the National Fairgrounds Speedway that Friday. He might be saying John should be the call on that. Well, I will not be calling that one because I penned in the Alabama 500 months, months in advance. The track was okay with it. They said, you better be here Saturday. I said, I'll be there bright and early Saturday. You won't have to worry about that. 
and that one will be broadcasted. Uh, the national race on Friday, uh, I would not have my voice broadcasted. So it's kind of like, a, uh, okay, well, what is it? The quarter mile stuff, cool. Be here for the quarter mile stuff and all the races on Saturday. And I said, I won't miss it for the world. Let's get ready to go green. Just a minute, 30 remaining. Aladon Contreras. Oh, slide. Micah Curtis. Sean Rowe. Jonathan Green, Jackson Buys. Let's ask you all down the chat below. If we skip New Smyrna, we will be doing it in the future. Now, that means you guys would vote for race four at X, not Xfinity, New Smyrna, no, not even New Smyrna. None of those, should we say. Phoenix with the super late models would then jump to race number three. We'll keep that vote up the entire time. 30 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. Bud, Mitchum, Austin, Lance, Carlos, Truther, they have lined up on pit road as they get ready to go green. What a time it is to be around with us because we're getting ready to rock and roll from the Music City. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR, and this is NR Night in America, round two of four. That's guaranteed tonight. You want that bonus race, race five. 300 likes, you'll go ahead and get it. I know we can do it. We have a great crowd on hand. If you're a member of this channel, well, make sure you go to spam those icons. Matter of fact, I want to say thank you to Sputtermouth for becoming a Champions Club member and also gifting five memberships to the viewers back at home. When we go ahead and take the green flag, if you're a member, make sure you spam that green icon so you don't miss a beat. Let's get ready to go green. Daniel Mosteller, Aiden Walker, lined up, ready to roll. Walker on the outside, Schmidt, Herring, James Budd, Gavin Austin, Nick Light, safe lined up. Seventh and eighth, Cody Workman back in 11th, Micah Curtis, Cody Vaughn, Frank Horley. As we get ready to go green flag racing. So glad to have you all with us, another 60 lap race, that being for round number two. Daniel Moss Siller will lead us to the green flag. I know how much you all love truck racing. We can't wait to see what you all think. Aiden Walker, the East Tennessee native. Lined up and ready to roll. Mitchum, Austin, Lights, Truther, Newbigging, Workman, Contreras, Malone, White, and Vaughn. All ready to go green. Next time by, we will see the one to go. They'll line up two by two. Let's go in and say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for a throttle up. Mitchum looking to go back to back. Demos. Looking to just hold on and find his way back into victory lane. Malone, White, Vaughn, Curtis, Rowe, Real, Orley, Addison. Ready to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen, this time by 
the one to go from Nashville. If you're here looking for race number one, well, that was just about 10 minutes ago. A great race, great finish. We won't spoil it for you. If you're here for truck racing, you've come to the right place. Chevy on Chevy, that's row number one. Toyota on Toyota, row number two. Sixty laps of thunder. And Nashville isn't known for cautions, which means strategy will be big. Keep an eye on it. Truth or new bigging back in ninth and ten. Maybe one of the drivers that play it right. Crowd on its feet. Aiden Walker on the outside of row number one. He's ran well here in the past. The finding victory lane has always been tough from Lebanon, Tennessee. The question is, what's next? Let's find out. Pace car hard left on the pit road. Chevy on Chevy, row one. Toyota on Toyota, row two. Crowd rises to the occasion as we roll the dice and seeing a light the fuse from Nashville Super Speedway. Three wide, new bigging. Stock up the guts, spinning big time to one and two. Cody Vaughn, Ethan Vietbu, and the caution wave. Lane Sanders got caught up in it. For a track not known for having the yellows, they got one right away. One and two has also been known for getting early yellows. Forgot to mention that stat line. But look at the damage there on the 11 of Lane Sanders. Let's go back to the restart. And this probably has nothing to do with him. It was just a wreck towards the back half. Some guys going, some not. You see it on the inside. You had a mix of guys checking up and a mix of guys that were ready to rock and roll. It's Cody Vaughn. Now they're three wide. They were peaking four wide. And does it start here with Vaughn? It very much does. He loses the rear end right in the center of the corner. And there's just nowhere to go. Right up into the outside wall. So the costume will wave for the first time here at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Aiden Walker did not come to pit road. He's just using the access road on the inside lane. They know they'll get the one to go this time by. So a quick yellow with the trucks. Calm us all down before we go back into the racing mode. Let's walk through it. Walker, Moss, Stellar, Schmidt, Mitchum, top four, Herring, Bud, New Bigging. Gavin Austin, Nick Lights, Carlos Struth, their top 10. Malone, White, Workman, Contreras, Horley, Real, Curtis Rodriguez, Tobin, and Schmidt. They find out that top 20. So the one to go will come out this time by. Now we're under a fuel save mode. Huh? You can't save fuel all the way down there in the, the access road, but if anybody knows about how the consistency is here at National Super Speedway. It should be Daniel Mosteller. He's been enough races knowing that. If you're gonna get a yellow here, it's probably gonna be really early. And usually you go green all the way through. So 38 trucks took the green flag. We line up, we load out, we get ready to go back. Green flag racing. If you wanna move race number three, you can vote it now and then race number four with the 
totally up to you all. We'll have a vote in hand. Chevy on Chevy row one, Schmidt, Mitchum, Toyota, Chevrolet row two, Toyota, Chevy row three. Ford back with Chevrolet, row number four, Toyota back with Ford, row number five. So we lock in, we line up just once more as we get ready to go back green. Chevy on Chevy as we get ready to go back green from Nashville. Ace car will make the hard left on the pit road this time by. As we'll have 56 laps to go from Middle Tennessee. Emos Walker. One sliding up the track out of harm's way. Walker in second, Schmidt in third. Mitchum on the outside, wanted to make something work. Riding home with Jordan Herring. Uh, Herring up there in the top five. I know it's early in this race. One on the bottom, Jackson buys. Jonah Espy went for a slide. Mitchum and fourth. Top side on Schmidt, gets the drive off. Walker to the inside of Mosseller. Now 87 is just able to hang tough on that outside. Got the air off the deck lid. Takes the lead right back, three wide for the top spot. Mitchum on the bottom. Walker in the middle. Mosteller hanging tough, going wide. Still three wide for the lead. Surprised they didn't just give it up. Walker clears. Mosteller nearly got him at the line, and Walker led that one. Six drivers, mostly under a bubble. Now they're about half a second. You see Gavin Austin. Eight drivers looking nearly nine under a full second. Most can clear for now, but Aiden Walker will not go quietly into the night. He walks and waits towards the back half of that 87. Jordan Herring, P3. He almost got a win at Daytona, but he went and dove in the grass to try to make up time. It didn't work. Nick Lights inside of Gavin Austin. That's for position for the sixth place spot. William Schmidt, Michael Mitchum. We had a wheel, that's for fourth. All chasing the 87 with 51 laps to go. Herring in third. He's got Mitchum all over the back end. Has not left the top five at all during this race. Highest third, currently third. Mosteller has not left the front row the entirety of this race. 50 laps to go, and he has definitely led most of them. Nine of the last 11 laps. Walker, one of 11. Look at Herring with the drive to the bottom. He thought about it. The only thing is, Walker does a really good job of defending and sizing up a driver in front of him at the exact same time. And you can see Herring was getting dicey. Let's dive to the bottom. Let's make it work. The second you get your nose chopped off, all that air gets dumped on your nose, and all of a sudden it becomes all turbulent. The big news for him right now is just keeping Mitchum at bay, because we know Michael Mitchum 
is going to make some type of move. Look at Carlos Truther back there in 10. Heyman, new big in wheel to wheel. Gavin Austin slides, saves it. Yes, he does. Three wide for the seventh spot. And Doug New Biggin goes around. Austin in the grass, costs him a wave. More wrecking to turn one. That's the night of Bryce Benton. Well, what comes around goes around, and it definitely went around. Down off turn number four, and for Douglas Subingi, it's something he did not want to see. I don't know if he's waiting for someone. Oh, he may. Maybe he felt wronged about the number 12. Frank Corley in the 22. Any way back around, we can send you to Washington. We don't think anything now will happen. Let's check back and see what unfolded. Ah, I mean, I don't know. It's a tough position to look at. You look 30 seconds ahead, and, and Doug was making a great time up on that outside lane, but did he come up or did? Gavin Austin come down. Second caution here at the Nashville Super Speedway. You see the three wide here. Now, oh, New Biggin definitely went up the track. He was focused on not getting uh, squeezed there by Truther. And there was just nowhere to go. Pit road's wide open, everyone comes in to get the fresh tires. Carlos Truther, what has happened to him? He's parked up on the outside lane. He got junked. Now he seriously got junked. And this is New Bigging that seems to not be happy with the 54. And on came the traffic, and there goes Doug out for the night. Wow. Uh, he didn't just take Truther out, and he took Jonathan Green there in the four. That is unbelievable. I thought maybe he would have been mad at Gavin Austin. Douglas Newbiggin will be out for this race in the night. The lap car was coming. And it would have been a lot better if he didn't take Eladon Contreras out with him and other guys that had race winning pieces. Drive that's supposed to be in the e-ticket. Uh, that is really, really bad. Well, 45 laps to go, and now the conversation will be does Doug keep his ride for the Alabama 500? Wow. The, the problem is it was collateral damage. I think he would have been out for the night just by doing that to begin with. But he took out way too many guys, and that's why we don't promote doing those type of things. Because now Contreras is out. Now Frank Horley's got unnecessary damage. And we will now wait and see with what is next to come. Lights are going to be off on the top of the base car. One to go. And the thing is, it, I don't think it was even Truther's fault. That's the worst part about it. If it was true, there's fault. Okay, they can say a retaliation, I guess, out for the night. Fine, but but he may be out of the e ticket. He 
you can't do that. There's a certain level of respect you gotta uphold. There's a lot of guys. There's 200 people that signed up for the e-ticket. We heard Badafuka wanted to race. So, Doug New Bigging will be out for the night. And maybe out for more. We'll keep you up to date on that, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have 43 laps to go in this race. Walker on the outside, most on the bottom. Mitchum, Herring, Light, Schmidt, Rodriguez, Horley, Contreras, and Real. As we get ready to go back green. Chevy on Chevy. 43 laps to go. Spinning back half the field, let him race. It's him outside, Jordan Herring and fourth. Break away up front, battle for the lead. Walker clears the turn three, locks it in off four. We'll leave this slot the driver the 93. Jordan Herring in fourth. Man, just looking to fight that wheel. Lights to the inside. Slots into the fourth position. Demos in third, Mitchum in second. Aiden Walker, the race leader, but for how long? I mean, Mitchum is right there. Osteller, loose off exit. Keeps it off the wall and will hold on to the fourth position. Lost a spot to the 20. And Lights is on a roll to the back half of Mitchum. Nick Lights has never won a race in NR Night in America and is two spots away from taking the race lead. This is where you could possibly get a long green flag run. Crossover inside, there goes the 20. Mix them to the outside. Dog fight to turn three. Walker, a hold steady, but Mitchum is now just a car laid back. Three Chevrolets up inside the top three. Herring trying to hold on, and what's happened to Moss? Stiller, he's dropped back to seven. Yeah, he's got an ill-handling truck for sure. I mean, it is just all over the place. There's no center for him to work with. Schmidt to the inside, looking for a way around Herring. Herring may give it away. Lights to the bottom of Mitchum. Mitchum topside, drive off exit. Somewhat pull into the back end. Of the 93 of Walker, 2-1, two, 2-0 two, the difference. Most on the flat, wheel to wheel with Hornish. Lights to the back end of Mitchum. He's got daylight to the inside. But do you pressure now? No, he baited him. He baited him big time. You can see Mitchum took a very defensive line into three. And it may cost him down off four. 36 to go. Walker to find the advantage. Mitchum, bold entry to three, 
pulls right to the, tel uh, the tailgate. There are the 93. Five to go. Four lead, three wide. Yahir Rodriguez on the bottom. And they're not giving each other any room. Four lead up the track. Hornish forced out of the gas. Now he's lucky that there's a driver that has serious awareness in that 77 because Hornish did not have to give him that slot at all. 34 to go from Nashville Super Speedway. Lights in third. Bottom of Mitchell. Won't get it there. Walker. Oh, almost lost it down off two. And we'll give the advantage to the 38. 12 the difference. 14 the difference. It's a tough scenario for the 38 of Michael Mitchell. Do I get aggressive and go after Walker? Or do I defend off Nick Lights in the 20? Big news is that the top two go wheel to wheel. As we've already seen a time before, third place will close in, fourth place will close in. Lap traffic makes it difficult for the top three, but they're still stuck together nose to tail. Thirty-two to do it. Herring in fifth. Yahir Rodriguez, Sean Rowe finds his way through. Cooper Click, Connor Zola. Those trucks back running on the track. But for Mitchum, the eyes of a back to back on Ryan his windshield. They just got to find a way around Aiden Walker. Easier said than done. We talked about it consistently with the trucks. Catching someone, that's great. Passing someone, whole different beast. And Mitchum's worry right here is if I show my cards and I find a way around Aiden Walker, does Nick Lights then pull the mine tailgate and try to make this a three horse race? It may take a while to find a way around Walker without moving them. Thirty to go. Herring to the bottom. Mosteller on the outside. White Schmidt battle for third. That's told the difference. Continues to be to the outside. Walker's get on that daylight. Get on that room. But just look at how good Michael Mitchum is rolling off exit. Oh, maybe not. Still about even with Walker. And Walker, one of the best drivers when it comes down to defending. Ones to one. He may have forced a 93 out of the groove, but he'll still get the drive off compared to the 38. I just tried a different lane. What works best? 29, 28 laps to go. And the driver that led most of this race is now obligated to that fifth place position. Moss Stellar has had it up, down, and sideways. He's mostly stopped the bleeding and was able to close back in. But right now, his idea is to get in the race winning hunt once more. Mitchum, turn three. Couldn't get it done. Aaron caught that outside wall. And Frank Corley will now arrive on the scene. The battle for six. I'm going to give it to Jordan Harry, man. He's put on one heck of a fight. And the fact that he has not dropped back at all, and I mean severely dropped back to like 17th, 18th, something you have to just go in and applaud. Check that. He just hit the outside wall. It will give up that sixth position. Herring, switch back inside. Frank Corley not too happy about that. And it's Ford on Toyota to start finish line. How about here, give it up. Looks like he's gonna fight it out. And we'll allow Yahir Rodriguez to join on in. 
Morley in the sixth position. Now has to go ahead and earn it. Uh, he's going to get it right there. Nice lunge to three. Locks it in, checks it out. Waring has to worry about Yahir Rodriguez. That's on the back end of the truck. Looks topside. Looks inside. Plotting, thinking. Nick White loses a spot to Moss. Stellar most into the fourth position. Twenty-four laps to go from Nashville Super Speedway. Schmidt P3. Mitchum. 13 the difference it was to the tailgate of the 93. Twenty three to go. That's going to be one of those classes uh, classic and our night in America finishes. No doubt about it. I mean these two have just been very very strong in the ring. Schmidt P3, 6 9 back. Moss Steller just around a second back to your race leaders. But how much fighting have these two have done? Where it affect their speed with 10 to go, with 8 laps to go. Tire wear, it's so important. You got to manage all that rubber. But Mitchum wants the lead and he wants it now. Thought about it to one. Looked for it in two. And that's strategic by Walker. It's a way to break the drop ever so slightly so Mitchum can't make a run to the bottom. That quick in and out. But is it affecting the tires? That's the big question. 10 the difference, 21 to go. Mitchum on the bottom. Walker to squeeze, gets the drive off exit. Mostella Schmidt wheel to wheel for third. And Demos is making a great comeback. He was all the way back in seventh after a disappointing restart. And it's now just a 9-6, 9-7 to Mitchum and Walker. They're still dicing it out for the lead with 20 laps remaining. 27 trucks left on the lead lap. Lights in fifth. William Schmidt in fourth. Nineteen remaining. I think Mitchum is really showing those cards. The only thing is, Walker's got to deal with dirty air with all these trucks coming on through. Eighteen laps to go. The top two under a bubble. Mosteller in third, Schmidt in fourth, Lights in fifth, Horley in sixth. Yahir Rodriguez and company. He can pull to the back end. Passing's just been a whole different beast, and will Mitchum use the bumper? One time we had a truck race at Myrtle Beach. Dawson Sutton, you may know him, he races at the National Fairgrounds Speedway. Lifted the rear tires off the truck of Michael Mitchum. The bump and run at Myrtle Beach. Mitchum came home second. Will he do the same to Walker? If it comes down to it with 17 to go, keep an eye on Moss Teller because lap for lap, he has been mostly closing that gap. He's on a row, and he knows he's a lot quicker when Mitchum is stalking Aiden Walker. Sixteen to go. That time by Mosteller. Best lap 
fastest lap out of anyone in the top three. Now Mitchum's got to pounce. He's got to pounce. He's got to do it quick. He's got to find a way around Aiden Walker. He cannot expect the race just to come between the top two when the 87 is that quick. Schmidt holds on to fourth, lights back the fifth. Frank Corley, what a drive. Once again, up to that sixth position. 15 laps to go. Once again, 300 likes. We will see race number five. You, the viewers, can vote on it. Mitchum, Walker. He's doing everything he can to find a way through. Just don't think he's going to have that pressure built in. Sticks the difference. Ten the difference. He's there. Looks to the outside. Can Michael Mitchum find a way around Ada Walker? He's pulled alongside wheel to wheel already once. And he's doing everything he can right now to just keep them at bay. He doesn't want Mazzo to close in, but he doesn't want Walker to pull away. And right now, Aiden Walker's just mirror job. He's in full defense mode. He knows he's not the fastest truck on track. He very much knows second and third are ready to go. But can you hold on and defend for the next 12 and a half laps? Mix them to the bottom. Mix them to the quarter panel. Nearly swiped the tailgate. Walker runs wide. Here comes the 30 and off exit. Crowd on its feet at the Nashville Super Speedway. Look at Demos, he's just flying. 8 2. He's taking his time. He knows he has a lot of opportunities and momentum to get to that top two. But he doesn't want to be stuck in a situation that Anthony Burroughs was just in. Mitchum in second. Drive off exit. Looking, peeking. Not about getting it back to the inside. Ten laps to go for Nashville. Oh, Mitchum up into Cooper Glick. And just lost the ball to momentum. That's exactly what Aiden Walker needed, a big mistake. And here comes Moss Steller looking for the second position. Nine to go. Glick near the wall. But Mitchum is so quick, he's just still gonna sit with the ball. One spinning inside, Gavin Austin. Gets the chunk boat out after contact with Lane Sanders. And these two definitely had a run in. Gets into the bottom of the track, we stay green. May have been an eye for an eye, I think Walker lost some time. With that move, but not a lot to really put Mitchum fully back in this race. Eight to go. Top three under a second. With seven laps to go, Aiden Walker has been in defense mode since about five laps into the restart. And Mitchum is there. Great time through one and two. But on exit, Back to a 2-9, he's still gained a little bit. And yeah, this ain't over by any stretch of the imagination. Look at Schmidt, look at Horley with Nick Lights. 
the great battle for the fourth position. Six to go from Nashville. Demos there in third. Mitchum holding on to second. It's gonna be five laps to go. We've seen truck races come down to the wire. We've seen COT races come down to the wire here as well. But can he just close in? And if he has to, perform the bump and run. That's what it's gonna come down to. I don't think he's gonna pass him off speed. You see Walker already just breaking the draft. He is expecting, he knows that 38 is gonna get desperate. Last time Mitchum tried the bump and run. Third place, came home with the win. That was New Smyrna in the Battle of the Beach. Can it work here with four laps to go? I don't know about you, but that crowd's on its feet. Three drivers under a blanket. Nick Lines, Frank Corley battling for position. That will be a race all the way back with the checker flag. So is the one for the lead. Two six. Two five the difference. Chevy on Chevy. Car length and a half. Back to two. Three to go. I think Demos used up all of his stuff after that big slide he had early in the restart. That costed him maybe about three to five laps on his tire wear. And Walker's doing everything he can, just trying to break that draft. Mitchum strong on entry. Last win, just the race previous. Got it done from Fort Worth, Texas under the lights. Now trying to sing his way to victory lane from the Music City. And if you're Aiden Walker, can you defend? Can you hold off that center lane? Mitchum in the wall. Loses valuable time. That could have been it. Aiden Walker needs one good lap. Salamanca. One to go from Middle Tennessee. Final run to one and two. Mistakes plagued Michael Mitchum towards the end of this race. But the driver that mirror drive and held on in a, def in a defensive move will see victory lane from the Nashville Super Speedway. Aiden Walker gets it done and is victorious from the Music City. Battle for fourth. Lights locks it in, Horley in fifth. William Schmidt, Cody Workman and Sean Rowe. That's two great races back to back. I mean, that's just fundamental stuff. SKS will see victory lane after a great, great race. Walker burns the town, and our night in America, feeling victories all year long. Let's get ready to go out and talk with their race winner, ladies and gentlemen. And the results, final results are on the left side of your screen. What a race, what a ride, all the way back to the start-finish line. And for Aiden Walker, a great, great treat.
he was able to go ahead and find. Walker, to John, congratulations. Um, we we kind of had to break that right front, totally did cheat. <laughs> um, yep, I got a copy. Well, a heck of a win, walking through it. Um, well, I kind of realized once around like maybe a quarter run of that run there, um, after the caution that it kind of meant with how the trucks are, it's kind of similar to the pass if you have much better tires, but I mean, Demos caught up to us and then he just fell off cliff right after because he was trying to get up to us, but it was just, you have to have the lead with the clean air and you'll be able to just be fine. Bishop did send it a lot into the corner, so that kind of gave me a little bit of stress, but I think overall it was just more of just trying to be smooth and calm around the entire race and things, so. Um, you made it work. We won. Can't say you didn't. Yeah. Um, we won in the Ryan Sieg truck, even though Ryan Sieg never drove this truck specifically. But we still won in the Ryan Sieg truck. Justice for Ryan Sieg. Wow. <laughs> I will say this. Great race, but where should we go tomorrow? Because it looks like Gen 6 Atlanta, that's race one. A lot wanted that one. But... I want to point this out, Phoenix will be now race number three with the super late models. Where should we go? Take some consideration for the viewers as well, as we still have to build a schedule for tomorrow's stream. Can we please do legend card for once? No. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. Can we do Nashville Fairgrounds at least? I don't know. I mean, we, I want to do the Fairgrounds, but I don't know if we'll do it. You're, you're saying that because you have to, you have a legend race. On Friday night. Well, yeah, but it does literally nothing because the legend car on iRacing is nothing like real life, so. So then why would we do it? Because it's the legend car. I think we're going to, I don't think we're going to be doing the legend car, but Nashville, I mean, that's something we could look into. Other tracks you may be considering. Um, there's a lot of tracks, but I, I seriously want to do Nashville because we haven't done it in a long while on in a, well, actually, no, we did in SRX, never mind. Um, we could do it in Xfinity. Yeah, Because apparently it got better, and they used our setup for the people that tested it. Huh. Yeah. That, oh, wait, that gives me flashbacks. Uh, let's not talk about that race. Um, but yeah, I think it would be fun. Should. As long as Dan doesn't do it. Well, we'll go ahead and see uh, how that goes down. Well, it was a fun race, Walker. We'll continue to ask, ladies and gentlemen, down in the chat below, what would you like to see as race two tomorrow? Would you like to say anything to anyone watching back at home? Um, well, I got to thank uh, my sponsors. They aren't on this truck because this is a throwback that I've ran before, but we finally won the throwback. Um, Lively's Custom Diecast, Coggle Motor Company, Blue Line, Tennessee. I need more sponsors. For in person or for iRacing? <laughs> oh, both would be very helpful. Oh, hey, you want to go ahead and sponsor Hayden Walker at the National Fairgrounds Speedway? Where can they go ahead and find you? Um, yeah, I, well, I'll have to get all that set up and things, but just send me a message on Twitter or something like that, or Instagram, but if you want to sponsor me, just message me on one of those. We'll possibly get something set up. Um, it will be a little more for real life, of course. Because, well, that's real life. Um, I mean, if you want to sponsor sim race, well, my sim racing side, go ahead. Just send me a message and we'll get it set up. Oh, that's a lot of fun. Oh, I bought the wrong uh, session. Do not join that one, ladies and gentlemen, that I just uh, put on in. Congratulations, Aiden Walker, winning race number two. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rock and roll. Once again, do not join that session. Do not. That was Xfinity at Phoenix. I don't know how I screwed that one up at all, but very much did. We're going to do super late models at Phoenix. So keep that in mind. So glad to have you all with us. Beautiful night of racing. Beautiful night of action as we get ready to ride just once more. So what's next? Well, we will have that super late model race. It's coming up as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. But the big thing that we're excited for is you guys are going to be able to vote where we go for race number four. We know we're starting Sunday night off right, and that would be with uh, Gen 6 at Atlanta. But the real question will be, what is next? Once again, do not join that session. You're going to join the session that says, join this. 
And we will be ready to go green. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Session is up. Password is IDK, ladies and gentlemen. Race two. I would love to go trucks at USA. That would be pretty cool as well. I mean, Lakeland has always been a great place to go racing and enter night in America. We are ready to go at it again. But the big thing is, what about race four tonight? I mean, originally it was supposed to be a grassroots track. Would you guys like to see trucks USA? Trucks has always put on a great showdown for us. Some people were asking, like, why are we going back to uh, Nashville Super Speedway? And it's like, hey, it is a lot of fun. It's always exciting. So, yes, the next session has gone up for the ones that are wondering. It is the super late models. Join the one that says join this. We will not be doing Xfinity at Phoenix. We'll be doing... Uh, uh, super late. So the idea of also super late is we want to do a summer series in NR Night in America where we have a mini league where every other week we just go to a short track with super late models. For the ones that don't know, I call pro late model racing around the United States. I've called it at Cordial, Nashville, uh, soon to be Anderson, and all over the place calling races on the short track scene. So it's also cool is the fact that a lot of those combos that I do in person, I can do in the simulator. For instance, for the ones that are wondering, why did I not stream last Saturday or Sunday? Last Saturday, I was calling a race at Bristol Motor Speedway. And last Sunday, I was calling a race at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. So the cool thing is, those combos that I call, we can do on iRacing. Instead of a pro late model, it'll be a super late model. But the street stocks at Bristol, we can do that. Some have actually asked to do that. If you want to join in tonight, uh, look up my last name, Ramos, R-A-M-O-S. Password is IDK. Something a lot have been asking is whatever in-person broadcast they do, try it in the simulator. So do we do Bristol uh, with the suit, not the super late model, Bristol with the street stocks is race number four. Or do we do Trucks USA? Do we go to another intermediate? And also have to remember, we have racing tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on YouTube.com backslash IDK player. Keep that in mind. So session is up. We're loading on in. We're going to give some guys some time to practice, but it is only a 60 lap race. That is it. There, then, and that. But we'll be ready to rock and roll. So thank you for everyone that's tuned on in. Everyone that's super chat became a member tonight. You guys are what keeps this community rolling. From Sputtermouth, the Champions Club, to Sputtermouth dropping the five gifted memberships. Tomorrow night, once again, big time stream. Tuesday night, another big time stream right before the Alabama 500. You're not going to want to miss that event. I'm telling you, that is going to be an event that so many are going to want to watch. So many will be excited for. You know, we didn't do Homestead at all, the Tuesday stream. I thought about moving it to Trucks Homestead, but at the same time, we can see how that all can work. Pretty great field for super late models at Phoenix. I'm telling you, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's not exactly a short track for the super lates. It's almost like an intermediate per se. They can still cut the dog lay. They can run different grooves. From testing, apparently it was wicked fun. And that's why we're excited to see how fun it is when we go green. What do you guys think of the new lighting? You need to definitely know before we continue to use it throughout NR Night in America's longevity. Good amount of drivers loading on in as we get ready to ride. Moss Deller is in. Super late. Daryl Redford, Charles Root, James Thurston, Davin Tobin. It is at the Phoenix Raceway. I don't think they've ever raced here at Phoenix with the super late models, but we're definitely going to go ahead and give it a shot. You guys want Homestead? We can start the voting on race four now. If that's what you all would like to see. Definitely something we would not be against. Qualifying will soon be underway. We're giving drivers some time to go ahead and practice and understand this new car track combo. That's the thing about Enter Night in America. This year, it's really been the year of new car track combos. I mean, I don't think we've seen too many different combos, which is really exciting because that means almost every single night you get something different. Which is great. And this is spanning all the way back to January. Some have said, I think we've only done one combo at most twice. So, really, really interesting to hear what they all think about that. More drivers still loading on in. Once again, password is IDK. You can look up my last name, Ramos, and you will be able to join on in. Uh, Eladon Contreras and the Corey Dozer Ford Mustang. 
Uh, Sean Rowe in the Daniel Suarez, 99. Moss Steller in his 87. Matthew White there in the 82. I believe that's the Bedford 82. It very much is. And I look at these schemes, I'm like, oh, I've called a race with that paint scheme running before. Or some of these, like, oh, I've definitely seen it on floor racing, Racing America. Always a blast, always exciting. And a lot of fun to see. For the ones that are wondering, it's going to feel loose the entire race. It's going to feel very, very loose. And then it's going to definitely have a better feel when the race continues on. It's going to adjust, it's going to change. The Epu has loaded on into the scene. Uh, very soon we're going to start qualifying. To go super late model racing from uh, the Phoenix Raceway. Jackson Bynes is in, Elenon Contreras is in. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go track side for Phoenix. So practice is coming to a close, just a quick 60 lap race from this track. And we've seen great racing here in the past. Where do we go, race four? I think we gotta go to Daytona Road Course. Honestly, I like that idea. The Daytona Road Course seems really, really fun. The Etbu. Lined up and loaded. Charles Root, William Schmidt, Lane Sanders, ready to go green. So what do you guys want to see for race number four? Once again, there's no guarantee in a race five unless we get 300 likes. The problem is it doesn't look likely tonight, unfortunately, but we're ready to see what the rest of the Knights have to offer. There's Kenny Real rolling around that fine machine. Thurston Root buys. Rick Fernandez. Lane Sanders up to 11th. But Trucks USA. I like the idea of Trucks USA. We have not done an Xfinity race tonight, so we're going to go in and double in on Xfinity. Where we could see Xfinity. at Charlotte. To track that would be great for Xfinity that we plan on doing at one point. Xfinity Vegas. We hang out out west. For Bristol Street Stocks. Ready to go green with race number three. Vietnam, Austin, James Thurston, Charles Rue. Gavin Austin. Aiden Walker. Eric W. gifting a membership. They're the Hail Mike. Moss Steller. Schmidt. Lined up, done with their lines. Cooper Glick. Finishing up the final laps with about a minute remaining. Carson Freeman, Jonah Espy, Kenny Real. I 
That's about the size of a traditional super late model field. James Thurston there in the forward. Cooper Click and Contreras has not put down a time. Matter of fact, only 18 drivers of all of them have joined in and put down a slot. Carson Freeman goes 20th. Super late model racing has always been interesting. And that big thing has been about giving it a shot if you're a viewer, you know. You used to see the cup cars, the Xfinity and truck, but why not try something different? Go to a cup track with a grassroots template body car and see what they can do. Well, the big thing is it's going to be loose, including early on. We expect it to be exciting all the way back to the green flag. John Rowe, fastest time, 27.025. Walker White, Viet Vu, Austin. The night is young, very, very young. We've only been streaming for two hours, and we're already on race number three. Now, we will be streaming tomorrow, but I think mean, you guys want to see more racing. Go ahead and drop a like. We'll consider still race number five because of how quickly this night has gone down. Get to 200, we may consider it. Once again, we do have a stream tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Let's lock and load, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, uh, welcome to Phoenix Raceway. Welcome to NR Night in America. It's a 60 laps every race. Eh, it's the only reason it's been 60 laps recently is because I just think that's a happy medium for the races. They just happen to all be 60. It won't be 60. If we do dates on a road, it's for sure not going to be 60. If we do Bristol Street Stocks, it'll for sure not be 60. Next time by, we'll go ahead and see the one to go. They roll off from the Phoenix International Raceway. Should we say just the Phoenix Raceway? That's what it's called out west as we get ready to go green. Let's say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for throttle up. Super late model action. You can tell some drivers that have never driven a late model. They say, oh, it's chipping out. Why is it chipping out? And all of a sudden you say, it always chips out. It's a late model. Super late model, late model stock, limited late model, pro late model. They all chip out. And the question is, what's going to happen here when we get the one to go? James Thurston locked in, ready to go racing. Everyone else... Lined up two by two. This is to see if super late model racing can work in at our night in America. Vietvu back to fifth. Gavin Austin in six. Schmidt Quill. Mostella Root, Glick and Sanders. Pace car, the hard left on the pit road. The thing is, they have to go in the restart zone. 60 laps, that was round one. 60 laps, that was round two. And for the first time ever, we're gonna bring super late models to the Phoenix Raceway. So, for 60 laps, let's light the fuse out west. Spin Cooper Glick. More wrecking to the outside and the caution's gonna wave. Maybe they just did not get going or they just didn't know how to get through a restart zone. With these cars just as quickly as we started. We're under the yellow. 
Let's go back and see what happened as towards the back half of the field. Any real. They're already bouncing on each other back there. Before we even truly got going, look at Coop on the bottom. No, that was on the 19. That was on Lane Sanders. And where was Kenny Real going? Not a clue. No, oh, he got ping pong. And look at that run. Well, the caution is out already here from uh, the Phoenix Raceway. Roe, Walker, Mosteller, Gavin Austin, Tobin, by Switzer, Fernandez. Freeman, Glick, White, Vietbu, Quill. We got Charles Root that's sitting on pit road. Kenny Real getting uh, quick service on that machine, but man, it did not take long for them to go ahead and make a mistake. So they're going to call single file restarts as we'll be ready to go back going. Looks like we'll still have about 20 drivers left racing after that wreck. Once again, super late model fields a lot different compared to the fields of the trucks, the Xfinity and the Cup Series. But for Sean Rowe, another opportunity has come up for us to try it again. So the thing is, if we get a caution, again, it'll be single file restarts due to us calling one to go. I say prematurely, but pretty early. We will have two by two for this restart. Let's try it again. Bro Walker, Mosteller Austin, Tobin by Switzer Fernandez, Freeman and White. That lining out your top 10 as we will try it once more. Sean Rowe in the 99 on the inside, Walker on the outside, 56 left to go for Phoenix. Demos way down on the flat. The unconventional line and here comes Sean Rowe to take it right back. I mean, he just snuck through. Looking, peeking. Rowe leads the first lap under full saw, fanning through the dog leg. Back to the inside. Wants it. Looks for it. Tries in deep to turn three. He must got that one. The thing is about these super late models, there's so much room to run with. You can go way on the flat like Walker's doing here. Or you can run the actual racing groove near that yellow line. Now you want a multi-groove racing, you've got it, and there goes Walker. Around with Tobin right in the middle of the field. And the big one will strike with 54 laps to go. Fernandez up and over. Davion Tobin. Yeah, his race is pretty much done. Just came off the wall. Rip that car and you won. 
Austin is out for the second time here from Phoenix. Let's go ahead and see what happened. Outside, when you think about these late models, you think you just get back on the gas without a problem. But comes down the track, I don't even think he thought Ada Walker was there. And there was just nowhere to go. The caution could not come out in time. Aiden Walker junked up. There's the 17. Charles Root with a huge lick. And then you have Rick Fernandez that goes tumbling into turn three. Wow. Let's run on board and see what he saw. This is a lap early, so you gotta get an understanding of how these super late models work. And when they wreck, they wreck. Hey, you ever see a super late model race, a pro late model race in person? I mean, it will fly apart in no time. Every lane was up for grabs. The wreck happens in front of him. And you expect them to stay on the wall and just not get to the bottom in time. A good thing we got a gyro cam. Caution is out once again here from the Phoenix Raceway. This is the second caution of the race. So this will be single file, if that's what you're wondering. We will have a single file restart. But for a lot of drivers, their hopes have now definitely have been dashed. Super late model fields are usually not as big as some may expect, including for local shows like the ones we have tonight. We had about 25 guys show up, but with Rex and they usually get pretty big you thin the herd out really, really quickly. White, Switzer, Vietbu, Quill, Gentry. Now that top five, Lee, Rowe, put back Mosteller in the eighth position. So you have 50 laps to go as we get ready for a restart. Buys real, other drivers getting back on the racing surface. You see Espy going around, a lot of damage there on the 17. Just wants to complete this race. Eladon Contreras fighting and clawing. You have Tobin sitting on pit road, Aiden Walker sitting on pit road, Charles Rue, Rick Fernandez, and a lot of junked up race cars. That's what you figure out pretty quickly. Michael Mitchum is also out of this race. So a lot to look at as we get ready to get fired up. Single file restarts as we get ready to try it again. My switcher's gotta get in line. Could delete the green if he does not get in line. Matter of fact, he still looks to the bottom. Slots in. 49 laps to go from the Phoenix Raceway. Chevy on Ford on Chevrolet. Inside the paint, I mean, he almost flirted with the inside barrel. These drivers are really getting excited going down to one and two. They know that's probably the most exciting line they're gonna be taking. Matthew White, new race leader, looking for his first win in NR9. Gavin Austin in seventh, Sean Rowe in eighth. Nemo's having to avoid it. Cooper Glick outside wall. Viet Vu in third. Will up the fifth. Gavin Austin in the sixth. It's right alongside that 51. 
Quill outside wall. They gotta give each other a lot more room. It's so easy to make a mistake. And for most of the drivers, they don't run super late models, so they're figuring things out on the fly. But for White, it's a half a second lead that he's very happy to have. Mostella in third. New objective, catch Danny Switzer and don't look back. Lost the rear end off exit. But quick to the gas to turn three. 87 is just flying. You have Viet Vu right behind him. Gavin Austin. Matt Beard fifth. Grassroots racing. There would be no big time racing if it wasn't for what is underneath the NASCAR truck Xfinity and Cup Series. So glad to have racing here at the Phoenix Raceway. Viet Vu sits in that fourth position, lined up nose to tail. There's a battle for spots. James Thurston, Landon Gentry, Jackson Byes, and Jacob Quill all tucked into a bubble. Coming to 44 laps to go. Gentry hangs it loose. One spinning, Jackson Byes. What a save down to the inside. I thought he had a full turn. Switzer and Moose. Battling for second. Viet Vu into the fourth position. They can sit and wait. Switzer sideways right off the nose and crosses the bow. I mean, how can you not love this? How can you not love Pro in super late model racing? Switzer holds on to it. Does, but has one heck of a mark on the right side. Mostella gets through, closes in to Matthew White. White the race leader. Most thinking about it. Look at James Thurston. Thurston inside, tucked in with Gavin Austin. Looking, sneaking, all the way down to the inside. James Thurston makes it work. Four under a blanket, third on back. Gavin Austin in the fourth, Switzer in the seventh. The battle for the lead, it's on for Phoenix. Matthew White. Looking and wanting it. I yeah, got Gavin Austin still back there in that fourth position. A lot of pressure from behind. As the 99 Sean Rowe now to the inside, and that's wheel to wheel for the fourth position. Now let me give you a little bit of insight for everyone watching live. I've gotten this question so much, I love answering it. It's when you call races in person, does what you do on the simulator get you prepared for it? And the answer is yes. Seeing this is, I wouldn't say so reminiscent because the track type is completely different, but the noise, the racing, the wheel to wheel, is stuff you would see at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, Cornell, Salem, even Bristol. It's so exciting to watch. And honestly, if we had 200 likes, we might as well have a race five. Whoa, White saves it off. Thanks in your race leader, Daniel Mossbelt. Oh, no, Osteller. We might as well have a super late model race at Bristol because it looks like Xfinity Road is winning the next round. I'm all for it. All right, this is just fantastic stuff. Now you have James Thurston and Most tucked in one, two. Gavin Austin in fourth. Ethan Viet through in fifth. I mean, this is just world class stuff. Viet through to the bottom. Trying to make a run on Austin. Wouldn't get the drive off exit. Thurston, 3 6 the difference. 
Vietvu. Inside, laying on the Gavin Austin machine. Battle for four, Danny Switzer. Sideways in 10th, I mean, he's dirt tracking into Phoenix. And don't look now, but James Thurston is closing in to Moss Stiller. Gavin to look to the bottom. Inside Vietvu. He really wanted to make it work again, but was not able to make it stick. 35, coming to 34 laps to go. And all eyes are really on what's going on up front in the battle for third. Gavin Austin, the local driver here in Phoenix, trying to chase down Vietvu and Matthew White. James Thurston is there, the battle for the lead. Thurston 62, Moss Stellar 87. Sparks up the dog leg. Wants the run to the bottom. He must need get that drive off exit. Holds on to turn two. Run down the back. Chevy versus Ford. First in the edge of three. Just able to hold on to that yellow line. See Demos doing everything he can to just get back to the gas. Cuts the dog leg way to the inside. Mostella rolls stop. Switch back on the 62. One laps to go from Phoenix, and it's a short track shootout with the grassroots super late models. They're sitting on the bottom. Mosteller hangs tough on the outside lane. 30 to go, and they're still wheel to wheel. This should allow some of these drivers to really close on in. What happened to Gavin Austin? Pit Road, it's open. He made contact the outside wall. He very much did. We'll watch back on it later. Battle for the lead. Thurston lined in. Another lunge through the dog leg. And he's able to cut down so low. I mean, right to that inside wall. Slides up with the slider. Mosteller retakes the lead with 29 to go. There's just so much racetrack to work with. And the talk has been about Will we have super late models be a consistent thing in NR Night in America? Can it even work? Will the viewers love it? What's there not to love about what you have right now? And then the rumor came around, we were considering doing a summer super series where every race for a NR Night would be super late models somewhere. And it would be a consistent points deal. Well, all we need is about 23, 25 guys to show up. And I'm telling you one thing, if Phoenix is showing everything that we love, and maybe some things that we haven't seen yet, you may want to tune in the summer of NR Night in America. Most loose off exit. Thurston is there. He's fighting and clawing his way through. Matthew White, Ethan Vietvu, Sean Rowe trying to hunt down the top two. 26 to go. Most hanging tough. Thurston right with him. Twenty-five to do it. 
I think Thurston's got a great opportunity to catch him, got a great opportunity to pass him. But he has to find the right line. You can run all the way to the inside wall, to the outside wall with the super late models. And it's showing it can work in a heartbeat. Top four sliding down off exit. Thurston is there. Moss Steller must hold on because that 62 is ready to strike. It's just such a tough race. 13 the difference, 12 the difference. James Thurston is there. Big to the bottom. Look to the outside. Twenty-three to go. Demos is just giving so much room on the center. The question still is, what's the exit speed? White sideways off exit. Here comes Thurston. Back to the inside at turn three. Most runs wide. Ford on the inside. Race through the dog leg in the brace for turn one. leader James Thurston but can he hold on to it Demos is right sticking with him back to the corner panel back to the dog leg all the way to the inside wall of the slide job James Thurston rolls exit and rolls wheel to wheel Head into three and four. I thought he was going to get the lead. He'll get it this time. This is what short track racing is all about. This is what super late model racing is all about. Hey, now, two drivers under a blanket with 20 laps to go. He's there. He's sticking with them. Thurston run to the bottom, almost into that inside wall. Most can clear again. I think James Thurston's got the faster piece. The Mosteller is A, really good at defending, and B, his car performs so much better in the wheel-to-wheel -wheel position. He can run the outside wall. He can run the inside wall. He can run the yellow line. He's led 18 of the 42 laps for a reason. With time ticking away, you look at Matthew White and you start saying, Okay, he's closing in. He did not have a good center of the race. Matter of fact, he didn't have a good run at all. So what can he do to come back? He's led a couple laps, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 14 of 43. But the second half of the race has just been so difficult. He needs Thurston and Mosteller to go back wheel to wheel. And for a lengthy period, Vietnu, another one. Great, strong car, but is it enough to tangle with the best? Thurston is there. Listen to when he gets back on the gas. Oh, he's got to yank it off that outside wall. And Demos gets just a better exit. 17 to go. Matthew White, Ethan Vietlou, Sean Rowe. Thurston looking, Thurston peaking. Wanting some type of edge. Just don't think he's gonna get it on this end of the speedway. He's gonna have to be very smart. He has 16 laps to work with. Coming to 15 laps to go, Daniel Mosteller has led the most laps, but oh boy, did this underdog of a race put on one heck of a show. It could end right here. And you can walk away saying, I'm glad I tuned in to race three of four tonight. Do you want to race five?
Mosteller, James Thurston. The fight, the claw is going to come all the way back for the win. Matthew White there, third. Thurston had a nice drive off that outside lane. The Atvu back there and fourth. Rowe back in fifth. Jacob Quill in the sixth position. 13 to go from Phoenix. Landon Gentry. Up the seventh, have a night. James Thurston. He's there, he's always in that one car lane to two car lane differentiary. But he's still just struggling to complete the pass on the 87. And with 12 laps to go, time is running out. Ford versus Chevy. There's Matthew White, there's the Atmu. Sean Rowe. 11 laps to go. He's gonna try to size him up any chance he gets. He cannot run the same line as the 87. The second he does that, he puts himself at risk. Great run on the top, rolled thoroughly. Gets back to the cast before the center of the corner. Locks it down to an 18, 19, but back off to the 20. Demos is just so strong off exit. 20 to go from Phoenix. Viet Vu in fourth, Sean Rowe in fifth. Quill, Gentry, Lee and Mize. Nine to go this time by. Look at Thurston just closing right to the back end of Demos. He's there, he just wants to reach out and grab the lead, but he has to be smart. Jumps to the outside of the dog leg. Early roll on entry, back to the gas to the center. That's been the common theme of that 62. He's got the KHI car lined up and rolling. 8 to go for the drivers in the top two. White Vietbu, third and fourth. Rowe Quill, fifth and six. Thurston, two nine, two seven, two six back. It's gonna take a lot for him to go out there and grab the lead away from Demos. But we've seen James Thurston do bold things when it matters the most. Matter of fact, he's won at Phoenix with the next gen. Because he was bold, he used the bumper, he was smart, putting himself in position. What's it gonna take here? Six to go out in the desert. Chevy on forward. Gentry, Quill, Rowe, Vietbu. Thurston inside. Demo shuts the door. Run to turn three. Out of the groove and into the outside wall goes James Thurston. He can make up the time. It's not fully over yet. You look at the right side. Still looks to be in good condition. But that's the advantage Moss Zeller needed. Only problem is lap traffic dead end. Now half a second. The difference between the top two. Four to go. Thurston now, if he wants to win, he's going to have to be absolutely perfect and hope for just a Hail Mary send, either a one and two or three and four. Gavin Austin, 
Oh, that's going to be the difference for any type of speed. Off exit for the forward. He's going to have one last shot, and that's down into one and two. If he can get down to that inside wall and just block the 87, he will have a shot at winning this race. And I guarantee you that's what he's thinking with one lap to go. Make up all the time you have now, and it's going to be all or nothing heading to one and two, not three and four. Half a second the difference. Daniel Mostella has won in almost everything this community has thrown at him. When the idea came up to do a super late model race at Phoenix, so many said it wouldn't work. It doesn't make sense. Super late models are not popular in our night in America. Think again, because this has been one heck of a showdown. Through three and four, Sabrinka, one to go in the desert. Thorsten's gonna try to go for the win. It's gotta be right here. There's the look on the apron. Two, four back. Down the back stretch. And the final drive to three and four. Daniel Mostella will win the first ever super late model race from the Phoenix Raceway. Mostella gets it done in Arizona. Thurston does not finish second. Matthew White, Ethan Vietbu. Come across the line. That was awesome. And it was a risk doing this car track combo. And what a risk. We're glad that has happened. A risk we're glad to take. You want more super late model racing? 300 likes? No, let's go 250. Let, let's do 250. 250. And we're going to do a super late model race for race number five. The best part about Phoenix is you can actually go into victory lane and park it. Osteller, he's been to victory lane here before. He knows how to get around. Let's go talk to your race winner. Unbelievable. Demos, this is Sean, you got a copy? Yes, sir, I do. That had to look fun from you. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was battling with her, throwing it into turn one, that was kind of fun, but uh, it was tough to pass. The person ran me down so much and he couldn't really do anything. That sounds like a super late model. I don't, I don't know a lot about short track racing, short track cars, so... Uh, There's a way to pass in super late model racing. That, I'm just going to point that out. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, yeah, that's you guys were racing it like a cup car. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's something the viewers don't like, uh, you know, when uh, people use the bumper. I mean, we saw people use the bumper here and there, but not too crazy. What did you think about it? I mean, we've been talking about doing more super late model racing. Uh, the crowd seemed to be very energetic about it. Should we do more of grassroots racing? I mean, it's a completely different standpoint than what we're used to. I, I want to see more of the SLM. I don't really want to see it at, uh, see it at this type of track. I think this is a little too big for it. And really? You couldn't really? Yeah, I think you really couldn't make a uh, traditional bump and run just because of how fast we were going. Well, when we do super late, obviously, if we're going to do it again, it's either going to be Bristol or a uh, traditional short track where that's grassroots. But the idea of this track is because if we do this super series we want to have a championship track that's big enough where we can hold more drivers and see untraditional racing like i don't think anyone expected the apron to work and all the way down the inside wall and I'm at, oh, i didn't either i got a message exactly. from someone saying it's super late model racing there's a different way to pass than the next gen <laughs> so and this track in my opinion it could work but it's just learning how to drive it. It's just night and day. It's like when we first started Enter Night, when some people were anti Gen 6, and now everyone's, hey, let's do more Gen 6. It's it's just more of a learning, a different type of racing. But was it interesting to you is the real question. I would say so. I mean, it, as I said, it was different. Um, 
you know, I wasn't a big fan of it, but um, use it, being able to use the apron in 1 and 2 and actually having it work to an extent where I could get to the outside and then pinch the guy on the bottom, that was something that in a next gen that wouldn't work, and in any other NASCAR that's probably not going to work unless it's a big skill set uh, difference. Um, Thurston and I are uh, pretty equal when it comes to skill set, so um, for it to work uh, was pretty surprising, and you know, it was interesting to see uh, how to counter the move and um, you know, react to it basically. Guess where we're going? Where? Xfinity Daytona Road. Yes! Oh my gosh, yes. Thank you. So, now nah, I gotta ask this now. 250 likes, we get race number five, because this race, this night has gone by overly quick. You know we've only been streaming for two and a half hours? It's ten, dang. Yeah, two and a half <laughs> hours we've been streaming, and we're already on race four. That's something you don't really... You we know, don't, it's zero. because the racing has been so consistent tonight. And so clean it. We obviously said this is a makeup streaming. You know what? We're gonna do it 250 likes because I'm gonna say it, Demos, in front of you and in front of everyone. The production that happened on Tuesday, the fact that I have not made that a member-only stream now is shocking because it was so embarrassing. That was every time I saw it, I was like, just do it, just do it. But I know a couple of viewers were like, no, no, no. Even though it was not a great production, just keep it up because we still may want to watch back on it. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna keep it up. We're gonna have to go back to back due to that being a bad and poor production on my end we want to have race five but i want to be super late models out of no short track what short track should we go to that we can get at least 20 to 25 guys we don't need 30 to 40 guys showing up to a super late model race short track racing 20 to 25 cars that is an outstanding field we need to do stafford i want stafford you guys want stafford i'll have to edit the camera angles quick want i want stafford. i want either stafford bristol concord or Nah, do we go Concord? <laughs> no, I, I, that, I, that'll be. Remember the last time we did that? Yeah, but that Expert was with a Gen 4. Mm, it, it's it's meant thing. for a super... Oh, Hickory. Hickory. No, 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 that... No, no, We gotta get no. better car counts at Hickory anyways. So, we... Kern County at night. No, no. What? No. no. What? No. Ooh, are you out of your mind? Stafford is right there. You're just a Stafford fan. You're you're a Staff you're a Staff you're as much as a Stafford loyalist as I am a Nashville Fairgrounds loyalist. I'll give you Stafford that. Stafford is amazing, and I will be there in two weeks. So we need Stafford. You know what? Scrap the late, the super late model. We need mo we need the SK modified. Stafford. Okay, no, 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 no. We, we just we the thing is the idea is also to introduce new viewers that may never have had the opportunity to see super late model racing in person to super late model racing. The reason why I say that is because before I moved to Nashville, I only knew about two big races on the short track side, maybe three, but it was the all American 400 at Nashville and the snowball derby. And if it was the third one, it was Winchester for the Winchester 400. So, the idea is we have an opportunity, we have a platform to showcase short track racing. I call races on the short track side. I'm gonna be honest, the race that I've had the most fun calling this night, this beautiful night, it's been that Phoenix race. Because I just love calling super and pro late model racing in person. It kind of just fit like a glove. And I was excited to see what y'all were able to do with it. So honestly, I'm all for anywhere. Some are saying fairgrounds, some are saying Oxford. I would love to see what tracks y'all think at the bottom, but. Winchester is soon to come to iRacing. You know that, right? Uh, okay. That's cool. Okay, you probably did not know that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've, never heard of, I've never heard of that track. You've never heard of so. Winchester. Exactly right. my point. And to short track viewers, they're saying, how do you not know what Winchester is? But when you grow up mostly watching NASCAR, you're not introduced to short track racing. Unless it was on an SRX side. Do you know what slinger is do you know what oh, yeah, I know pensacola that, yeah. is srx went there and i knew you watched mm -hmm. srx it introduced people to what grassroots racing was but for our side i think we have an opportunity to do it so uh, i know i'm yapping a lot but i'm getting the session up don't you worry do we do a summer super series demon yes but uh I'm pers I, I would really like it if you res we reserved it for the best of the best in NR. Uh, it would be an all-star. It would be... It, nah, like a, like a, I, like I was a, thinking a, more like a, a race like four. A, a, a set group of like 20 people going at it for a set amount of weeks would be like awesome. What I was thinking is we do it as a race four, so it's for the viewers late at night. And let's be honest, there's good drivers that come out late at night, including over the summer. It, it's going to oh, be yeah. packed. But the idea is 
We will have an open if we need an open, right? Qualifying locks in certain drivers for qualifying just off of single car speed, a quick 15 lap race to lock in the final four drivers. And then we go in if we have to, or we just have bump day. Which one do you think? Uh, heats to decide a starting lineup would be cool. But bump they day, got really rid got of the I Daytona road setup for Xfinity. All right, so um, what, what road course do we want? I say we can do Gen 4, not Gen 4. We can do Gen 6 Xfinity or Gen 6 Daytona. What, what am I saying? Gen 6 Daytona road. I like that. I like that. I, I'm going to be honest. Or, that sounds or, a or we could do a different road course. But they voted. The viewers have spoken. What if we went to Spa? Come on. Xfinity I don't have Spa yet. Oh, it would be way. On. It would be way too quick to put the camera angles and have it be a good production. You guys care about how great the racing is. I do too. But I also care about how good the production is. Because for the ones that are watching back at home, you could be watching on a projector, a big screen, a laptop. You could be sitting in your bed right now watching this live. The production has got to be the best from race one to the final checkered flag. And Fair I point. just know that we would not get the best production. Will we get good racing? A thousand percent. Production, I wouldn't be ready for it. For Spa, we have the cameras in an area, not Spa, for Stafford, I have cameras in an area where I can make quick adjustments before the race. But how many people show up to Stafford for race five on a Saturday night when we have a stream Sunday night? I'm thinking if we do a super late model race for race five, it's got to be a free track. What do you think? Because I want to introduce uh, super late model racing on a bigger scale in NR9, including this summer. We could do Oxford. I, I think that's a track. We I don't think we've ever that done that track. That is true. Right? That's one of the only. That's one of the only tracks I think we've never done that are like free. Yep. We could do Oxford. There's no walls there, which is scary. Oh come on, that's a lot of fun. That's something that I don't think any, I, that, that's something that drivers like. Okay. I, imagine someone gets shipped into turn one and they go off into the field. That would be awesome. No recovering from that. Eh. <laughs> Define awesome. What if I spit Aladam Contreras into that jump on the infield, That'd and he goes flying funny. in the air? That would be awesome. That's something no other track will provide. We'll we, we see, but let's just do free tracks. Session is up. All this talk about super late models for race number five. We still have to hit 250 likes to even get to that point. And we're already three away, so it looks like we're doing it next. Demos, heck of a treat. We hope. Whoa, wait, don't, 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 don't get rid of me yet. Remember uh, in the drivers' meeting, you said that. Uh, That's right. Race, what, yeah. what should we see? What should we I see tomorrow? Want, I want international racing. I want Monza Oval. Oh. Why are you silent? I'm silent because it doesn't sound very... Next gens, Monza Oval. Okay, you know, it's before... An... No, no. I, I love the traditional racing that we were getting back to before a super speed. We're about to do Atlanta. Atlanta's race one. Are you sure? Oh. Atlanta's race Get one with the I... Gen 6. We could keep the Monza route. Monza combined, no chicanes in the Gen 6. Uh, Monza GP. I I'm pretty happy with that one. In the next gen, a full distance Monza GP in the next gen. That would be sick. I do like F the international <laughs> side. F F 53 laps in the next gen at Monza on the road course. We'd only have to do two races then. Oh, wow, well, yeah, everyone else probably chose. I'm, I'm, I'm being greedy. L let's, do, let's do that combo, though. That that's something that I don't think we've done in a while. We have not done Monza in a while. I would love to get to another international track. Do you guys want international race tomorrow? We'll have Atlanta race one, and then we'll have international race as round number two. I mean, we haven't touched Silverstone. We haven't... Okay. At first, I was saying no to it, but Bathurst Next Gen is going to happen. It is going to happen sometime, hopefully this summer. Because, wow. That was really cool when I watched them test it. When I watched Mavic go when out you, there and test it, when you watched Brady Mavic test it, he it was, was the only one that tested it. But it was cool. It was it really was. cool. It was. It, it's something I don't think anyone else has done either. No, and I love. You know what? This is the year of trying new things. And let's be honest, we have tried new things and it's worked out really well. And we've tried new things and it has absolutely laid an egg. But that's what's great about trying new things. You don't know what you're gonna get. Super late model Phoenix. I'm not gonna lie. And testing was great. But before we took the green flag, I'm like. They are probably not going to know how to drive it. I hope this is not a laying the egg. At first, it was really scary. But then it turned out to be really, really good. Now, here we are. And we're talking about doing next gen at Monza. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, we haven't done uh, next gen Montreal in a while. We haven't done Trex Canadian Tire yet. 
but no one that Canadian tire is super outdated and I don't think one person mm. in this Discord has ever had Schmidt. It. William that Schmidt does. Over. What about Suzuka? Do I own, a, a Arca, do I Arca race at Suzuka? It's not free, but well, the Nurburgring. They... Well, well, the, the big thing is we are looking at doing trucks in Nurburgring, dude. This summer is going to be uh, so cool. This summer on Enter Nights is going to be so cool. We're looking at trucks at the Nurburgring, next gen at Bathurst, Xfinity or Gen Six Spa, or a multi class race at Spa. I'm really looking forward to a possible multi class race at Spa. That would be insane. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. We're very much excited about what's to come. Whoa, there's no front stretch chicane, are you serious? Did I not include the front stretch chicane? Uh, let me go back. Oh, looks like I we had no front stretch chicane. And it's five minute falling. How are we gonna get to Well, I was talking to you, that's my excuse. I'll give you that. No, 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 well, I'm how many drivers do we have in here? We have a good amount of drivers. You wanna just advance to qualifying now? All right. Yes, yeah, yeah. so we're gonna go in advance. You know what? How much you take me around this track? And uh, we can go ahead and hear exactly what things have to offer. But I am stoked now for race five. I am really excited to see what's to come. There you are, Demos. Uh, Daytona Road, let's talk about it. When we first debuted it in NR Night in America, I literally said, and I quote, this will be the last time we race here. You know why? Why is that, Jonathan? Because everybody watched the race before and filed out for Daytona Road. I went, wow. And Rudy Valentin just wiped the floor clean with it. And then all of a sudden you guys just kept saying, do it, just do it, come on. Things aren't the same as it was in 2021 and our night's different, your commentary is different, our driving is different, the graphics look different. Our, drive, our driving has not changed. Ah, uh, you watched back on a couple old streams last night. They very much has changed. It has changed big time. Since 2021, for sure it's changed. You guys got gotten a lot quicker. The commentary is very different. And I mean, very, very different. Why am I still delaying the members only streams? I have to take care of that. Remind me to take care of that sometime this week because for the ones that don't know, Enter Night started in 21 and I need to unprivate all of those old live streams for you every all to single, check out. Every single driver has been asking for this for like two years. It's gonna be it's members finally. only though. We're gonna do members only for that. So there's an extra incentive to have a membership to the YouTube channel. I know there's a couple of confused or a, a little bit of confusion when people were saying, oh, you're just gonna make the streams member only. I said, no, no, that is not the case. A lot thought tonight was gonna be members only, which I thought was ridiculous. There's, I would never do that, but older streams being members only, I think that's pretty cool. I do, yeah, I cannot wait for that. I, I can't wait to see me wreck everybody. Well, here's an interesting track. Where are you on track? You're heading down to NASCAR uh, no, three and four. The speed is crazy. You guys are hitting 190 into that backstretch bus stop. We got you at 175. Climbing fast, man. I'm, I think I'm going to break 200. I think you're going to break 200. Oh my gosh. You can't be serious. 199 and chipped out. Oh, it got to 202. No, hey, that's pretty no, good. No, 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 no. No. That's pretty cool. I mean, you get over 200 miles per hour on this road course. That's probably why people love it so much. You start saying how the speed is and how the racing is so different. I don't think you want to go that fast if you're going to make the corner. So for the ones that are wondering why it's not Xfinity, I recently deleted the setup. The setup was here recently, but it did uh, say goodnight. And we are looking at a race five. Will we get a race six, 300 likes? It depends on how good the super late model race is. Uh, for the next one, but 250 likes will get us there. It's also because this stream it's going by pretty quickly I love my roots. People have been asking me they're like do you consider the fairgrounds grassroots or do you consider I racing grassroots? For me my roots started on the sim, which is for some very weird to hear But I racing is my roots and so is grassroots racing because that's where I got my start in the in-person broadcast So when you kind of mix two together, I get really excited. I'm gonna be honest we can have 20 cars show up to the super late model race, and to me, I'm like, heck yeah, that's a great field. Because that's what super late model fields look like, 20, 25, I mean, very rarely do you get 36, 38, 40 show up. 192, 193, down to the backstretch bus stop. What if they didn't have the backstretch bus stop? Oh, I, I don't even want to take care of that. I don't even want to take care of 
what that would be like. But guess what? There's no there's no curves. There's no curves in the back Trisha game, so we can really attack it, unlike the NFL. That's true. But there is that uh wait, hold on. Is there Is there any tire barriers back there? Uh well, I'm done with my lap, so I was thinking. Yeah, go take us around. Take us around the whole track. I want to see how quick you'd go if you didn't stop. For Are you forcing a break? Too, I, I am 208 right now. 206 miles an hour over the bank uh, turns one to Oh, there are tire barriers here. They're all, oh, man. I was going to say, because I remember we considered it having a Daytona Oval. Okay, I'm not going to watch you go ahead and do the jump. But oh, come on, they get the jump, man. I was considering doing a uh, Daytona Oval Gen 6 race with this aero package. That would have been pretty interesting. It would. I remember I did a test with some few people back in 2021, and it was a lot of fun. It was back when they didn't have the barrier. On the yeah. Way, but there was some update where they uh, made it a barrier, so you couldn't do that anymore. What and grassroots tracks do I call races at? The National Fairgrounds, Speedway, and select races up, or select tracks up in the Midwest and down in the Southeast. So it could be... It could be a bunch of different things. It could be Cordell down in Georgia. It could be Anderson up in Indiana. Go to Bib, the Bib, just got back from Bristol. I, I continue to talk about that. I'm just really, like, it, I wouldn't say it just hit me, but it hit me, I think, on Monday. It was like, wow. I go to the race at Bristol and Nashville in the same week. Like, obviously, was excited leading into it. I wasn't nervous at all heading into Bristol. I was more just excited. But with having all those objectives of, calling a race at Bristol, doing my absolute best in calling that broadcast, then having to drive quickly to Nashville, which is not close. It's about five hours from each other. Five, four, maybe maybe around four. Let's say four. It's like, man, that's a heck of a task, including with the fact that Bristol was a night race and Nashville was an afternoon race. It was, uh, it was pretty interesting, but I'm here to showcase grassroots racing again. I love it. Demos, Where'd you qualify? Qualified second, man. Yeah, you were distracted, man. I still got P2. Wow. All right. Hey, 12 laps. You think that's enough for your uh, stuff to go down? Uh, if we don't get any uh, Mickey Mouse yellows, hopefully. Oh, hold uh, on. I think that's a shot at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we don't need people wrecking for last to cause the yellows. That's there what I want. we go. I, I, want a, I want a race that goes green all the way. That's what road racing's all about. No caution. No cost. I like that idea. Hey, you're lined up. You got James Thurston here inside YouTube. Been going at it a lot. You'll be going at it this Friday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. You're ready for the Alabama 500? I am going to win that race, and it is going to be a party in uh, Connecticut. Hey, spam nine down in the chat below if you're a member, or just spam nine in general if you think Demos is going to win the Alabama 500. James Thurston, see so your inside wing. OJ left wing, he's got the number four for the Alabama 500. I'm excited to see you two go at it. Two big names in this community. Are you ready to rock and roll here in race number four? We'll see if you're ready to rock and roll come race time this Friday. Good luck. Thank you. Lines in, ready to go green. Ladies and gentlemen, this is NR Night in America rolling down off for the fourth race of the night. Time to go green. Let's say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for throttle up. Most on the outside, Thurston on the bottom. Lined up, ready to go after it. Matthew White, Schmidt, lined in, ready to go back green as they have raced multiple races tonight. So when the Godspeed Drivers comes out in full force, the lights come off on the pace car. Because we're not just at Daytona, we are here ready to go full on racing on the road course in Central Florida. So without further ado, let's light the fuse from the World Center of Racing.
Emos outside, tiptoeing Matthew White. Sneaks through the cap at her wheel to wheel. Schmidt on the bottom, bent in on the outside. All chasing James Thurston from the East Horseshoe to the Kink of the West. Thurston wide, Moss Stellar inside. Thurston into the grass, and Demos goes top of the board. Now it's done, right off the gun. It's a NASCAR one and two. Remember how quick these cars can roll. I mean, looking at over 200 for the tri -oval. 192, 193 to the bus stop. Schmidt looking to the inside, heading to Lamar. A slam on the brakes. And Mose is able to stick right with them. River Page in fourth. James Thurston in third. William Schmidt. Speed indeed is in the draft of the 87. One ninety six, one ninety eight, two oh two, and breaking just after the start finish line. Made that one's work. Nice look back to the bottom. William Schmidt holds top of the board. Spinning towards the back half of the field. James Thurston around. Look at that 24 machine, but they got it back going. So we stay green. Gavin Austin going around. Down into the grass. Now we're going to keep in mind how many times they spin, including up front, because it may result in a caution. But until then, it's clean and green racing up front. More spinning. Up and into that outside wall. Or should we say up and into the tire barrier. Pushing and shoving. That's what they're all doing. So glad to have you all with us. Gavin Austin in the wall again. Yeah, he just can't go ahead and get it back center. William Schmidt was able to take the lead during that. So for the ones that are wondering, we had frame rate issues because the overlays, well, they're still taking data from the last couple of races. So we said, hey, let's sit back, let's relax, and let's go ahead and just do a quick, uh, quick reset. River Page, Aiden Walker, James Thurston, they're back wheel to wheel. The old one that went up into that outside wall, you may go ahead and ask who that was. We're going to go ahead and take a quick peek to see who it was with the battles for the lead heading down to turn one. That is Keith Ingram. Now back to the 29th position. Yeah, Gavin really lost a lot of time, a lot of speed. A lot of drivers have been separated. The only thing is you don't want too many cautions, including at a racetrack like this, because it will be open season. Here's the battle for the fourth place position. First into the bottom, Aiden Walker. Switch back to the inside and holds it wheel to wheel. Mosteller, 3-8 for the difference. Back to a 5-5. Demos in second. 4-3, now 4-2 the difference. Speed is definitely there on the 87 for William Schmidt. I'm surprised he's been able to get away to this early in the lead. River Page, 1 3 back. Top two. Knows the tail into Lamar. Toyota versus Chevy. We've seen this before. Mondeau Basin versus Joseph Armstrong. 
to the difference. Just watch the speed and how much they carry it. Two oh three, two oh four, two oh five, two oh six. We had a wheel on the brace to turn one. He's got to make sure he doesn't overdrive it. But Mostella takes the top spot back. Schmidt looking for a way through with the S's. Ison and Dyson to the East Horseshoe. River Page making up some time. One four seven the difference. Aiden Walker, James Thurston, fourth and fifth. Lined up and shining. The thing is, the oval without there being that front stretch chicane, you can make up so much time just off the draft. I think we're gonna see a lot of passing for the lead. That's not gonna be going anywhere. Three nine back. One ninety, one ninety five. Really locking in at two hundred, and into the bus stop. And Schmidt has got company that of River Page. The laps fading away as time continues to tick. Nine to go for the World Center of Racing. Minos has got the advantage. We've already seen him overdrive turn one before. How aggressive will he get? He definitely had that late break. We'll go over that white line. Where Schmidt technically should make up time. He doesn't do it at all. Gavin Austin around again, and this time the caution will wave. Look at the damage. He's going to take the camera out. One thing left to do, and that's to go see what happened. Marks it back on the racetrack. Here comes traffic. Marcus Vanderlee, Sean Rowe both had a void running up inside the top 10. And we had enough incidents for a caution definitely to come out, and that's the caution that Demos, I don't think, wanted to see. Let's go chat with some drivers. What's great about this? Let's show off the personalities before the heats get a bad. You guys want to go ahead and hear what other drivers have got to say? Hear what they have to offer. Whoa, Landon Gentry took out the number two. He didn't realize we were watching him. And he most definitely will have a penalty for that incident. Wayne Sanders isn't Sean. He got a copy. Well, hey, uh, I spoke with you earlier. He took a time, right? Car track combo that you love, track that you enjoy, track that is your home track. You've been in and out of e-ticket events. You've shown some great things, but I think tonight's a great representation of Lane Sanders. When you're good, you're pretty decent. I'm gonna be honest. You can hold your own, you can run up inside the top 15. But when you're not good, you get Phoenix level of Lane Sanders. How do you look into Talladega knowing it's a mixed bag of your reputation now compared to what it was before, where people just automatically said, oh, Lane Sanders, we're striving in our night in America. That was just basically the running talk, not true at all. But for you, you got drivers that respect you and don't respect you. What's your outlook? Well, you're, you're not gonna like what I just did. I almost crashed. Oh my, oh no, my goodness. I, I was trying to break you down real quick. Yeah, it's just uh, at least I know Talladega and Phoenix, whatever you call it. So, 
Yeah, Phoenix was really stupid. Nashville, I did not have a fun time in Nashville because... You had a great looking truck, though. At least you had that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got... We had we had the truck. Worked out the old SpongeBob Mobile, which I hope we bring out for whatever we're doing with trucks. But we will have future. the Myrtle Beach 400. We're looking into it. Which I'm excited for. You, you know I'm the local Myrtle Beach enthusiast. Well, hey, but, yeah. I got to go ahead and ask you... I just realized this Monster Jam was at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Oh yeah, you, you didn't know about that? I did not know about that. I knew about that. Wow, okay. I, that kind of woke me up. I had no idea they uh, they did that. Let's talk E-Ticket here. You're not going in as a favorite. Matter of fact, you're not even coming in close as the favorite. Oh no, I never did. But do you see that as an advantage? Thinking, People may just forget about Lane Sanders. I mean, here, here are the viewers. They're listening to you. It's about personality. It's about understanding who you are as a driver. But this is a good chance you're going to be flying under the radar. I think it gives me a good chance to show off without having to have all the expectations. You know, just, you got your good plate drivers that always do good, always. Like Joe Schmidt. Uh, the Champagnes, whenever they don't wreck the field, they're usually good. Cootie, when he doesn't wreck the field, he's usually in the top five. I ain't got any of those expectations, John. Which I feel that it's a lot of pressure off the driver. It means I can just do my thing, not have to worry about what everybody else thinks. And I can just go about doing what I think without people in the middle of the world going, oh, he's not doing too hard. He's a favorite. He's a favorite. We got a good papyrus machine out here in the Daytona Road Course. I've, I've taken to this better, faster than I thought I would. I got my qualifying lap ruined by a stray turtle and the chicane. Well, let's address the elephant in the room. Happy birthday, Lane. Oh, great. I, 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 dump gentry, I, dump gen, I dump gentry at Nashville for not letting that thing die. No! So, well, I, it wasn't a... Oh, like come a on. It's pretty out. interesting. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It, it wasn't... Well, to be fair, John, it wasn't a... I mean, my birthday's in October. Yeah, I know. So. It's <laughs> It was like... It wasn't a takeout. It was just a simple spin and move on. But then he, he tried doing all his things. Michael Tillis. Where do I know that name? He's raced in the hall before? There's a Michael Tillis that raced his late though. I think there is. Oh, Anyways... Really? Uh, I'm excited to see what you can do with the Alabama 500. Last heat ticket you had was Michigan, and we saw what happened live. I think that didn't we, help. We don't. We don't. We don't we need don't to talk, talk about, about that, that, though. Hey, we don't need to talk about that. You're right. We don't need to talk about it. But here's the I, thing: it's a new track, new opportunity. We know there's going to be a lot of people watching tonight's a makeup stream. It's an opportunity to work on wreck avoidance, just being consistent, even though we're not at a super speedway. It's an opportunity to just get in the rhythm because we're having a stream Sunday. We look to be having a stream possibly on Tuesday. That e-ticket, last time we did Talladega in April for an e-ticket, highest view ever, 24,000 views. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Shaka hype into this one. Was it your NWP? Shaka was your NWP from last year because we had East Steps guys, Icebergs guys, Darius guys, and all that coming in watching. Not being able to I think we got a lot of things looking forward to that event. I think even though you're under the radar, you still should not be counted out. But only time will tell when uh, oh, you yeah. get back going to see what you can do. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm looking, looking real forward to it. Let's hope my inner doesn't, doesn't turn me into a flying saucer this time. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, good luck for the rest of the race. Thank you, John. That's Lane Sanders, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll get ready to uh, lock it down just once more. So the one to go is out. We go green uh, this time by. You love the speed of this road course, as I do. And we will get ready to try it once again. And our night in America, I'm doing victories all year long. Thurston, Walker, Schmidt, top six. Vanderlee, Benton, Sanders, Vietnam, and so many others have lined up getting ready for that two by two. Last time we had a restart, it was the shuffle of the deck. But we'll be here. Thurston in third, River Page in second.
ready to try it again. Tillis on the bottom, first time restarting up inside the top two. Mosteller, Thurston, third and fourth. Schmidt, Walker, and others have lined up and got ready for the restart. James Thurston's been quick, but he has to minimize the mistakes. Will he be able to do it with five laps to go? This is it. This is now. This is racing from Daytona. Ford on Ford, row one. Chevy on Ford, row number two. Toyota on Chevrolet, row number three. Five laps to go from Daytona. Tillis did not get going. Three wide to turn one. Page to the lead and bye bye Michael Tillis. Completely missed his turn one. Fords out front, they're one two. Amos already looked to the inside of Thurston. Schmidt in fifth, Walker in sixth, Benton in seventh, Viet Vu back in eighth, Sanders spies, ninth, tenth, Jackson by spinning to the bottom. Down into the guardrail. Thurston sitting in third, William Schmidt back to fourth. We saw a quick Demosis through NASCAR one and two, and most prominently NASCAR three and four, due to, due to there not being a fresh stretch of came. So can he make up the time? We've already seen speeds up the 206. Closes in the page, looks top, looks inside. 195, down into the breaking zone. He's got to energize the run up right here. Page is really strong to the bus stop of Lamar. Mosteller lined up with Thurston. Looks to the outside. Three wide, most in the wall. Nearly 200 miles per hour, and James Thurston retakes the lead. Great peek inside using the fenders. Door slams the 87. Page holding on, four drivers under a blanket. I think Rivers got something on that outside lane. It's just the hope and praying that he just doesn't get swallowed up. Most clears. To the West Horseshoe. The fact that they went nearly 200 miles per hour, three wide without any trap. I mean, it's just crazy to think. And Schmitz back there in fourth, watching on. Mosteller top, Thurston middle. Page looks to the inside. New race leader, Daniel Mosteller. But what can Thurston do? Hey, he's going to have that slipstream all the way back into Lamar. Up to 198. Push once. Looks to the outside. Schmidt wants to go with him. Inside, outside, five car breakaway. Coming to three, lots to go, and Thurst is just so good on that outside lane. If he can just help break Boss Teller. 203, 204. Lock up, that of the 87. Rolls off, hangs in, and holds on to the lead. That's what they do not need. Demos is definitely the best of the infield portion of this track. It was Thurston versus Demos with the super late models at Phoenix. It's Thurston versus Demos with three other drivers tucked in nose to tail. 
at the road course in Daytona. There's Sean Rowe in six. There's Aiden Walker in fifth. Page to the inside of William Schmidt. Three races, three different winners. Mitchum race one, Walker race two, Mostella race three. Can James Thurston be one of four? Nah, he's just hard in the gas. No lifting. 196, tinkered with it. On the break, right to the back end. Most has to hold on. Thurston got loose and say goodbye to the 87. He's got tucked back in the draft. You have to stop the bleeding. Momentum will carry back to the four. But this gap will mean a difference in the infield road course portion at Daytona. Two to go for the World Center of Racing. Thurston inside. Thirty-three hundred. Two dice it out. Schmidt back there in third. One second the difference. Yeah, he's going to get in line quickly with Thurston. There's no way they're going to beat Demos on the infield. Uh, it's it's checkmate through the east and west horseshoe. The oval is where it's going to come down unless there's a crazy lunge that makes a massive difference. Seven the difference. Nearly eight the difference. Thurston will have the momentum back to NASCAR one and two. Schmidt will be the lifeline tucked in nose to tail. But will the draft come into play? He's three back last time. He lost nearly half a second on the infield. He's getting a slip up out of the 87. And he may just have gotten it. Most loses time. Thurston half a second. So he may be more than one mistake. If it's going to happen, it's going to have to happen this lap. Sabanka, one to go from the road course at Daytona. Late lunge by Thurston, lock up Mosteller. Just want to touch him, that's exactly what he did. S is left, right to the center, headed to the East Horseshoe. Thurston goes wide. Mosteller inside. Schmidt wants his on. Three drivers under a blanket. And James is so good on the oval, just needs to sit with them. With the kink. And to the West Horseshoe. Thurston lunch inside. Not going to be enough. Schmidt holds it wheel to wheel. Oh, he threw it away. And can William Schmidt close it out in Daytona? Final time, climbing the banking of NASCAR one and two. Seven the difference. I think if it's gonna have to happen, it's gonna have to happen in Lamar. Or unless the 87 makes a big mistake. A lot of room to work with. Over the humps, easy in, easy out. Schmidt, four for the difference. Through NASCAR, three and four. Schmidt looks to be too far back. Moss Deller goes back to back and wins on the road course in Daytona. That's so unfortunate, James Thurston threw it away.
That's twice now you've seen Catbird. Either a hit to the outside wall or an overdrive of the corner. And our night in America fueling victories all year long. And that's just how it went down. Let's go watch back on that finish. All right, this is where, but that's not even this part. Let's talk about right here, how Thurston made up so much time. But it would not end up being enough. Let's go grab Daniel Mosteller. And we'll go talk to your race winner here in just a moment at our night in America. Feeling victories all year long. Demos. Oh, let's go and try him again. Demos, this is a John. You got a copy. Yeah, man, I just talked to you. I know. We just had this conversation. And you go to victory lane. How about it? That was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Uh, the field was a lot closer and the drop was extremely powerful. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I usually when you come out of that backstretch chicane, you think you won, but Schmidt had a powerful backstretch chicane and he was in my draft and I had to, you know, sneak a little bit coming to the line there. Well, it was exciting. You and James Thurston again going at it before a Sunday stream and before uh, possibly a Tuesday and most definitely the e-ticket event next Friday. Gotta ask you this, we did hit 250 likes, we knew heading in this was a makeup stream. Real stream is also good, well this is a real stream, but the big stream is gonna be Sunday, Tuesday, and the big, big one is this Friday. We're going grassroots racing, super late models, give me some car track combos so we can go put them up for a vote for race five. Oh, not the, no, no, no grassroots? The super or, late models. Oh, super late model, um, hmm. I wanna see super late Stafford as one option. So it's going to be Stafford. That's one vote. I'm, try, I'm wait, starting wait, to think wait. of the other votes. Um, how about uh, Oxford? We talked about that earlier. Oxford. What about Rockingham? Too big? No, no, that's way that, no, that, that track stinks. I don't think so. I, I highly I, disagree. I, I think so. I do not. <laughs> we can agree to disagree, but I'm definitely disagreeing. Free tracks, that's the big thing though. How many will we get for Stafford? That's my only thing as a viewer, you gotta think about that. We might not get too many. We did USA way back in the day and it was our first super late model race and what looked to be our last super late model race for a while. I remember that TCB won that by like five seconds over me. And I think we were, we were one of the only people on the lead lap. Mm -hmm. There is Martinsville, there is Bristol. We'll throw Bristol there, in there. Th there is South Boston. Will it work That's, with South Boston? Uh, it's worth a shot. I've done South Boston a lot. Uh, I, I'm actually not against going back to USA. I think USA makes a lot of sense. Mm, I don't know. Do you think it won't work I, there? I don't. I, that's not really a popular track, and the drivers don't usually like that track. Really? I, 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 I want but it's South free. Boston over. South Boston's free too. That's right there. The big thing is about Stafford, I know we don't have enough drivers to do it as a race five, so if we do South Boston, it's gotta replace Stafford. Okay, you have me on that. But we will be doing it uh, in the future. So Sobo, Oxford, Bristol, USA International. Should we get rid of Bristol because it's not grassroots enough or would yeah, you yeah, be curious yeah. about it? Get rid of that. I don't, what about I don't Richmond? That. Oh my goodness gracious. Kenny no. Real said Richmond. I don't know how that would work. I mean, I, I, it's kind of the same story as Bristol. If we're getting rid of Bristol, we shouldn't be doing Richmond either. Okay, what about this? We know that we're going to split the vote between Bristol and Richmond, right? If we do it, right? So should we replace one of those grassroots tracks with those two, and then we kind of figure it out from there? You've lost me, man. I'm just looking at the chat. Seeing what <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is we replace USA International, right, with a Richmond, so all the... Ones that are looking for NASCAR tracks can be split 
between Bristol and Richmond, just as how people would be split between Sobo and Oxford. All right, that sounds good. Does that make sense? I, I think so. Let let's not do Southern National, though. I see that in the chat a lot. That that's not good. We don't have the cameras for, Ox for Oxford, but I can make it pretty quickly. Oxford does not have walls in the corner. South Boston, you all know it really well. We have cameras. It's and Oxford, great. Oxford has jumps, so if you're, you're a little bored No, 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 practice, uh, 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 if you want to, If you want to never come back, you'll do the jump at Oxford. <laughs> I promise you. If you're looking for a one-way ticket out of this community, by all means, it'll be there. Let's go with the voting. All right, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I, I'm all over the place. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. The big thing is... The racing 25 cars as you mentioned before if we do it in the summer as a race for it should be just to the best drivers where it's like 20 to 25 cars per race which is a stout super late model field let's be honest yeah no no stop voting for bristol oh my goodness <laughs> yeah no, bristol and richmond oh my gosh are they actually like oh. completely outclassing it oh come on oh oxford's, oxford's coming uh, back uh, oxford's, oxford's coming, coming back. back come on vote for oxford <laughs> vote for oxford oxford's really coming back Come on, there's no way we're doing Bristol. We, we, we did Phoenix in this. Now I want to point out, there's a bunch of viewers in here that I know that are undecided on what to vote for. So if you're a viewer in the chat right now, just spam what track you want. Oxford's winning. Come on, Oxford. And since tonight, look, get the, we've only been streaming for three and a half hours. Can you believe that? If we get you know 300 what? likes, it's we out. may consider a race six because hey, there hasn't been six. a lot of I, I, Let me pick that combo. You gotta win. I, I, I got, I got, I got two in a row. It's gotta that's be super so that, late. That, that, I, I want to end that, the night on super late. No. Yes. What about the, what about the super formula? We haven't done that in forever. You said you were gonna do that all the time. We did two races that never did it again. Yeah, and then we did multi-class racing. <laughs> that's been like two months as well. well no, Come that's on. not. It's been one month <laughs> since we've done it. What about a GT3 race in the race? In March, we were nuts with what we were doing. We could be nuts right now. See, Schultz is from saying vote for Oxford, and Oxford's winning by 11% now. My influence on this and this community is I amazing. don't know about super form. I like the grassroots racing stuff. I have to be prepared because after the Alabama 500, I have to call more grassroots racing in person. I got Nashville the day after. And then after the Myrtle Beach 400, which we plan on running the Friday after the Alabama 500, that Saturday, I got to go to Anderson to call more races. So I'm all in the grassroots mood right now. While wow, Oxford is uh, winning by a country mile. There's 229 watching. Can we get the votes in? Are we really going to go to Oxford? We've never done yeah. Oxford before. Well, it looks like we're about to do it for the first time. The drivers wanted something new. And we've got the you guys always say you want something new. We do give and, you new things, which is great. And the people. The people always want new things. They don't want to watch the same car track combo every day. But we don't, we hey, don't want to see the same Calm down, Schulte. Do calm down, Schulte. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> get ready to race. I think it's going to be awesome. I, personally, I'd love to see Bristol. No, no, don't listen to him. Don't listen oh, to him. I don't know. No, that, don't listen oh, to him. You, people said don't listen to me about Phoenix. I said Phoenix wasn't going to be good. What happened with Phoenix? I won. That's what happened. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should have we should have put Concord on there. Oh my god. Yeah, we should have put Concord. I'm not oh gonna lie. God. Well, if we do a race six, I think we gotta consider Concord. They got the camera angles ready. It may take a little while for me to set the cameras up, but here's the big thing. It might be my little bit. A little bit. I mean by a couple minutes. But uh, you got 45 minutes to do 50 laps, just in case it's an absolute barn burner. But super late model racing, it's here and it's now. Guess what? We're rolling in race number. Is it four? No, it's race number five. It's five man. Race number it's five. All oh, right, man. It's been going by so quick. I'm used to being like just starting race number four. The ra Shout out to the drivers. I mean, the racing tonight has been fantastic. Wouldn't you think? Absolutely. I think the most amount of cautions we've had in a race tonight is two. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're right. I think it's two. And that's something to be unheard of in this era of NR where dirty driving is a massive thing. Do we have to go I mean, back to what you've started with? What would that be? Uh, your first time racing an NR night in America. Yo, did you not see what I did last year? I hooked a hard ride on Gavin Austin. Cover the line. Yeah, I still do. Back it. to your roots. Heck yeah, man! Right before the eight, you got to practice for it. All right, we're gonna allow forty-three guys to go ahead. And, no, we'll go forty-five. We'll allow forty-five to load, uh, load in. If we need to do bump day, I'll let you know uh, what the bump day will be. But all right, I'm excited. I'm hooked. I'm ready to go. It's gonna be a lot of fun. A lot of racing action. Session is up. Passwords IDK. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to Oxford. Super late model racing. I love it. Don't you love it? I do, I do too, even though I'm not good at it. It's okay. That you don't you know when something is great when you're not the best and you still love it. Yeah, man, I wasn't the best at the super lates at Phoenix. Uh, I wasn't the fastest, but uh, you know, you learn as you go, and that's how you get better as a driver. We are going to Oxford Plains to go racing. Does anybody know what the big race is at Oxford? Let's ask you, Demos. Uh, we're trying to introduce short track racing, right? What is Oxford's big, let's just say, e-ticket event that they have every year? The only thing I know about that track is the jump, and I can't wait to test it out in practice. No, you will not. No, no, no. We're going to be kicking people out of that. We do not want to see anyone taking the jump at all. Jump, you're out. You're out for the night, you're, and if you're an e-ticket, you may have to replace people. Well, let's take it Alexander, seriously. Alexander Balderas is going to get his spot. The big race at Oxford is the Oxford 250. If you guys did not know, it's a very exciting track. I'm excited to see how it goes down. If you want to watch the Oxford 250, it is on Racing America. So keep an eye on that. I've definitely had a ton of broadcasts on Racing America. I think I've had one on Flow. I think so. I think it was one race that was uh, co sanctioning Flow and Racing America. Gonna be a lot of fun though. Uh, bumping, we may only have to allow 22 to 25. We'll see how this goes. 45 will be entering, which is crazy. I don't think 45 will show up. But if we do do another one after this, and we believe it's a, and if it's a free track, and we think we can still get 40, then maybe we'll have to put an open in there. What do you think, Demos? Uh, I, I don't know about our about that. Oh, no, no. We're, we're going to have just enough. We're going to have just enough for Oxford to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, that's Moss Stellar, ladies and gentlemen. And he will hang out as we get ready to go green. And our night in America feeling victories all year long. Who would have thought the super late models would be the ones taking the sim racing world by storm tonight? It's exciting. It's fun. It's about to be race day in NASCAR. Will we do a race six? I'm not sure. This is only a 50 lap race, so it, it shouldn't be a long race. I think it should have been a little bit longer. But if we get about 22 to 25 guys, I think that's the sweet spot for a super late model racing. We'll have a good, good lineup. Looking up and down, looking to see what everyone has to say, and we are here. We got cars on track. And it's time for me to uh, update these camera angles quickly before we go racing. And update quick, I mean seriously quick. So the cameras that they have that are default are basically cameras that are meant for short tracks. But I know that doesn't like fit our criteria of what we want to see in NR Night in America. So. The big thing is making sure everything looks good, everything works well. I think we're I think we're gonna have just enough good cameras for this to be really exciting. Oxford, ladies and gentlemen, there are there are already three wide. Uh, you can't see it yet, but they're already uh, three wide coming back to the It's gonna be a good race. I am really excited to see what type of race this is, honestly. I think it's gonna be really good. You hear them rolling around the track. Grandstands look pretty full, that's pretty cool. Oxford has grandstands on both ends, if you're wondering. Which is amazing, a track like this. So our idea right now is just to make sure it's somewhat doable so you guys can watch the race and say, yeah, I'm glad I tuned into this one. That's the overall objective with the camera angles in this race. And it takes sometimes a lot, it usually takes a lot longer to edit camera angles for NR Night in America, but with this one kind of just being on the fly, it's, it's pretty easy to just kind of plug and play and see uh, how it all works. And I think I have an idea of how that will work. You guys continue to hear cars rolling around the racetrack and for good reason, because we are editing. We're making sure it is where you all would like to see good racing. I think we're gonna have fantastic racing. Let's just hope it all lives up 
to what you all are thinking. We're gonna have about 20 something uh, late model drivers, so that's gonna be perfect. About 25, I think, have uh, worked their way to Oxford. Great track, I will say. This is actually, when you don't go out there and just play around, it is a really solid racetrack. But what you do with that racetrack is so important. And I'm already, right now, I'm already watching. These guys are, they're getting used to it. The good thing is they will get the practice because for most of these guys, they've never raced at Oxford. And if they have, it's been so long that they probably don't remember how to race it. Should I say correctly? Is, is there a right way to race at Oxford? So we'll get ready to go ahead and line things up as we get ready to go green. Enter Night in America, feeling victories all year long. Let's do it. I think we're ready. It's very grassroots. The cameras are very grassroots. They're loud enough to uh, put on a show, I'll tell you that. But they're definitely uh, grassroots looking, which is not really a problem. It's very unique, very unique, very exciting. The other thing is Oxford, they don't have a lot of places to put cameras. I have now recently just found out because there is, once again, no walls. Let's go green, ladies and gentlemen. Let's head track sign for qualifying the first time at Oxford Plains in NR Night in America. Let's line them up. Alex Anderson on the racetrack. Sinez sitting on the racetrack. There's Alex Anderson. Watched him. Aiden Walker goes fourth. Now seventh quick. Mason Moriarty. We may have to have bump day. There may be an overflow of drivers, and it is. They're going to call it top 25 race. So only 25 drivers will be able to take the green flag. It's going to be big. Bet in Bassinez, Marty Shamela. A lot of these guys that are just looking to go ahead and make it in will be in jeopardy. Tillis goes around. Jacob Quill, 24. Bassinez, Kenny Real. Contreras. to the line. Looking to have something figured out. Alex Anderson, James Thurston up to six. Aiden Walker finishes his time. William Schmidt in the Red Bull 79. Woo. Gavin Austin, Alex Anderson. James Thurston, back there in six, Sean Rowe, and right off the gun, we're gonna have our first L1. Thurston doing the jump. And they did get the warning that you cannot do that. That's one of the big reasons why we've avoided Oxford for so long, because they'll just, 
go out there and see and they'll want to do it. The big thing is already James Thurston will have to start in 25th. Anderson, Gavin Austin, Freddie Bassanez, Ethan Eckert, Alex Anderson rolling around with about a minute remaining. Peyton Peterson, and the last Jarvis going and set down a time. This is not Berlin Raceway or Berlin Speedway, I believe it's one of those two, but it is Oxford Speedway, Oxford Plains. All the way up in the northeast. Gavin Austin in ninth. Beasley back there in tenth. And 35 seconds, we'll be ready to go green flag racing. So 30 drivers went out to Oxford. The only 25 will see the green flag. Adrian Beasley. Going around the track. So 50 laps, that is the distance. We expect to have great, great racing all the way around. You want more grassroots racing? I want another race tonight. With how early this stream could have ended and us basically making up Tuesday, why not? 300 likes, we'll consider it. It depends on how good this race is and the drivers can definitely put on a show. So they line up nose to tail, getting ready to go green. Aiden Walker. Top of the board, Sean Rowe will be to his wing, and we will be ready to set off and go green at flag racing. The second grassroots short track tonight for NR Night in America. Jacob Quill, Laval, Moriarty, Jonah Espy. We'll do multiple pace laps so they can get ready, and we'll be going green. in and he's ready to roll from Oxford Plains. Kendall, Vietbu, Duggan. Vietbu. Bassanez. Now you just hear that low rumble. as these guys get ready to head on out. Some worried indeed, others excited. Because when you go super late model racing, there's always something to get on your feet about. James Thurston will be getting that EOL. Be jumping to the outside. And in just a couple laps time, we will be racing from the Oxford Speedway. Top of your screen, they're gonna be rotating in and out of where all these drivers are. So not this time by, next time by, we'll get the one to go. So let's go ahead and say those magical words. Guy, speed. Drivers, you are go for throttle up.
They'll get the one to go. Walker Road, Schmidt, Lilly, Mosteller, Thurston, Anderson, Shamela. Pace car will make the hard move on the pit road. And for the first time ever, and our night in America goes racing from Oxford Plains. So let's light the fuse up in Maine. Rose Schmidt, easy back to the throttle. Walker leads lap one. Josh Lilly is hanging tough. One spinning back half of the field. Joan Aspie. Schmidt inside, hanging tough. There was Sean Rowe. Rowe's been really tough to go ahead and master. We're going wheel to wheel with. Red Bull on the bottom. High Rock on the outside lane, both Chevrolets. Walker leads that one. He's trying to find a way back on that outside, just cannot get it to stick. Schmidt, Rose, still wheel to wheel for the position. Mosteller now in the fourth place spot. Lap traffic already looking to become an issue. There with Bassanez. No, he's on pit road. Peterson, first driver that could go a lap now. Man, Adam Walker's just got it made. A lot of drivers worried about finding that edge because you can gain really well where you're running based off of where the outside wall is, including in the center of the corner. Now, granted, you are running the inside groove most of the time. But the thing about Oxford is, look at how Moss Stellar was positioned across the start finish line. Once the racing groove levels out, one spinning shot row. Down into the inside grass, finds a hump, gets it refired. We stay green. Once you get things flattened out, it's only about two grooves on the straightaway. Groove number three, it's a big, big dip, and you don't want to go over that dip at all because you won't get any type of momentum hanging at turn one. That's where we consistently see issues fall apart. James Thurston, a lot of damage. William Schmidt. Pressure from Osteller. Not fully committed to having any issues. And the big thing is at Oxford, you're gonna have cars go off. It's just how it is. But if it's off the racing surface, you're not going to get a caution. Walker leads by a 6-8. William Schmidt wanting to close in. He's just about there. Two, three, maybe four car lanes back. Lap traffic was an issue. And James Thurston, remember that timely penalty? Well, he got caught up in an incident. That being it all the way back in the field. Josh Lilly, Alex Anderson, Ethan Vietnu, River Page, Ethan Ecker, Mason Moriarty, Bryce Benton looking for a move. Moss Steller wanting the inside lane there on Schmidt. One to the inside. Off the racing surface, Peter Gula. Uh, he is technically in pit road. So he won't be getting a caution, but he may need a tow. I don't think he's getting off that inside bound. Mosteller into P2. Schmidt fighting back on the inside. Can most go three in a row? A win at Phoenix, win at Oxford. Can't be out of the question. Eight five, eight three, seven five. The difference. Marty Shamela there in third. Have a night for him. Couldn't make the ticket event, so doing everything he can now to make something worth his while. I think one thing I've realized about Oxford is you're always turning. Look at this track. There's two straights, but once you get back to the gas, you already have to size up for the next corner. That reminds me of the Berlin Speedway up there near uh, the upper half of Michigan. 
Here Grand Rapids. Always turning. They do it there, they do it here. 7 6, 8 1 the difference, 32 laps to go. Walker has put on a clinic, at least for the early portions. With 32 laps to go, can that Chevy hold out in front? Shamela to the inside, that's of William Schmidt. He's definitely been towards the back half of running. He's not been able to get the drive off the way he wants to. Bosteller is there. He's closed in to Aiden Walker. The only problem, oh, trouble. One up and over on the back straightaway. That would be the 65. There is Zach Reveal. The caution's going to wave. Uh, he didn't just go up and over. He went seriously. Pump it over, watch here. Full lap earlier. He's going at it there with the 38. Kept looking, kept peeking, wanted something to work, and Gavin Austin just gets right in the back end of him. The six gets away, but... Man, what a hit! Right with the leaders on coming, comes down the track. William Schmidt has to avoid. I mean, he barely snuck through it. That was Adrian Beasley. I got him to that 65. But the way he wrecked, he should technically be okay. Aiden Walker has come to pit road and is going to give up the track position. Put him towards the back half of the field. Do you need tires? What's better, track position or tires? I mean, you can't pass here. But at the same time, you may want to say, hey, it's going to be a traffic jam for the next 27, 25 laps when we get back green. Let's see how that goes. One to go. So the will line up two by two. If we do get a second caution, it will be single file. But we get ready to go back racing from Oxford Plains. One caution in the books. William Schmidt, Marty Shamela, all chasing Moss. Stellar to turn one. Schmidt under pressure, Josh Lilly. Marty, right in the thick of it, on the back end of the 87. It's all about when you get back to that gas, you can't use the outside wall as a gauge. You're really running the middle of this racetrack. One sideways, 24, River Page. Aiden Walker goes around and the caution's gonna wave. Coming in for tires. Paid off. And that means we'll have another restart. Let's go see it. And they're doing a great job racing. But when push definitely came to shove, something went amiss, and that was. 24 all the way to the bottom. Watch on River Page again. Let's see what happened. So he was wheel to wheel here at Alex Anderson. Oh man, he just got slammed in the back of that may have been the 46 of Ethan Vietvu. And when they came back around, there is nowhere for Mason Moriarty to go. You see tucks to the inside. I guess the left side's up on the strips. And for River Page and company, it was just a track blocker. Gavin Austin barely sneaks on through. Peter Gula may be involved in that one. 
No, it was on pit road. But Aiden Walker for sure was in it. That was Christian Kendall in the 38. That went around as well. So for Super Late Model Racing, we have a new rule, at least that we're implementing just for tonight. After two cautions, it's single file restarts. And this is to ensure uh, a good restart, but with how Oxford is, we've been getting great racing. And from the drop of the green flag, I'm not surprised, but I'm more shocked that it's been this way. I mean, makes me want to continue doing Super Late Model Racing in the night. Well, it is midnight on the East Coast. It's 11 o'clock here at Central Time. It's streaming now for about four hours. Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. They're all lined in, ready to go back green. We'll get the one to go this time by. So 17 laps to go in the race. Do we have a race number six? Only way to get that is if we hit 300 likes. These drivers can keep it toe to toe, wheel to wheel. Mosteller, Shamela, Lillian Schmidt, 17 to go from Oxford. Schmidt in fourth, looking for a way around Josh Lilly. Right to the back bumper, the 46. Right, keep it that single file. Not a lot of passing, not a lot of shuffling. Louie in third, Shamela in second. Trying to track down that 87. I think Marty's got the speed, he's just gotta know when to go ahead and push the limit. See most going awfully wide to the center. Loses a lot of time, but can really approach down off entry or down into entry and get the next runoff exit. Oxford, one of the more unique tracks and the fact that you can't really gauge what's the limit. 13 to go. Schmidt sideways, Anderson. Ready to strike in the Toyota. Six the difference. Prime the difference. Look at Josh Lilly. Nicknamed the last great underdog in NR Night in America. Can he find a way around Marty Shamela and possibly give it to Moss Teller? Time's running out, so they've got to go. Six on the board. Marty has not been able to close in at all. His next best. Opportunity is going to come down to that lap traffic. Moe's forced to go wide. After River Page went around, Josh Lilly's involved, so is William Schmidt in the caution will wave. I think Schmidt lost the tire. He very much did. And it was right in front of the leaders. For the first time tonight, we've had three yellows in a race. Now nah, he's done. I don't think he realizes he lost the right front. He saw it bouncing. But when things got collected, well, that was it. Net code between the 24 and the three. You'll see it here. Uh, they were going to make contact anyways. That three machine just drove it way too deep. And for River Page, there is nothing that you can do. There you Gavin Austin. Wow. At first I thought, man, was that on River Page? But not at all. And you really hate it for drivers like Josh Lilly, for William Schmidt. We didn't have anything to work with. Watch again. Demos does a great job of avoiding it. Josh was just not ready. 
When Gavin Austin came in, that's what just took the tire off of William Schmidt. Watch it just bounce away. Rip completely off the suspension. That was all she wrote. Six to go will be five laps to go. We'll have a four lap restart here from Oxford. That's gonna be it. So can Moss Steller hold on? Or can Marty Shamela find a way around? Now this is it right here. Quick 50 lap race. Chevy, Chevy, got a Toyota back there in third. Let's see how it goes down. Four to go from Oxford. Mari did not get a good start. Mostella pulls away. Anderson around and into the grass. No, he saved it. Three to go. Marty's got to make something work. Look who's arrived. Sean Rowe making up all that time after pitting. But it's time running out. Two to go from Oxford. Moss Zeller, one at Phoenix, one at the road course in Daytona. Has to make one more clean lap to get it done and made. Salamanca, one to go for the Northeast. Marty Shamela will have one last shot. Three and four. This is it. Two four back. Three in a row. Mostella victorious from Oxford Plains. Sean Rowe goes around. And you cannot beat good old Big Red. Three in a row. Tough to know what Aiden Walker would have done. I mean, he came to pit road, and we knew that was not going to be the right move. seem to be talking to this guy all night. This is unreal stuff. He's still burning it down. Demos, is it John? You got a copy. Hey, I just talked to you. <laughs> You're back. Look at that. Hey, man. All right, that was... Can I hit the jump now? No, no, no. No, no, um, all right, fine, go do it, go do it. You go around, you go ahead and do it, why not? And we got 300 likes. Man, I want three in a row. That hasn't been done since NR fairness. That's three in a row, do we hear? Four for four for the 87, there's your jump. I don't know why you guys love doing the jump. I don't see what's so great about it. It is pretty funny. Well, obviously it cannot be happening in the middle of a race. I, well, I gave him the okay to do it. Well, the good news is the drivers are respectful. That's what I love about this race. What do you think? Yeah, man, how about that? That, that was, was clean. Pretty, that was a pretty good That was a race. clean, super late model race. You know what that means? We do it again. We got one more. We've never done more than six races. If we do seven, it has to probably be 350 likes. Let's be honest. But... And it should be a super speedway. It's going to be a super late model. We're ending the night on super late models for sure. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. We got an e ticket coming up. We're about to have 500 miles at Talladega, the Alabama 500. Hey, listen, talk to you about this track. It's weird, unique. What do you think? Uh, I don't think I was full throttle once that entire race. You're turning the entire time. Yeah, man. Uh, and as I said, you're not full throttle basically anywhere on the track. So it's all about throttle management. And yeah, you said we're turning basically all the time. And uh, I guess I'm pretty good at that. I gotta ask you this, if we do this summer super series, is this on the schedule? Yes, absolutely. Where do we go? Super late model racing, let's do it. 
Well, someone said Cock Warden. I like let's the put, idea. Put, All right, let, do we let, throw Bristol in there, though? No, no, let's not do any national. You just want only grassroots tracks. Yeah. Do the viewers want grassroots tracks? Let's Hopefully. go Concord. Okay, we'll throw Concord in there, which is cool. Uh, we'll pull, we'll throw Sobo back in there as well. Southern National. Mm, I don't have the cam. That's going to take way too long for cameras. We've done it once, but I had I was never able to get the cameras the way I needed it to be. Would Langley work with the Super Lates? We haven't done Langley in a while. No, um, Lanier. We haven't done Lanier in a while. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I think we have. I don't know. Lanier. Lanier and Langley. That's, that is on. the tr They used to hold Speed Fest at Lanier, and I know that because I had to do a bunch of information on Speed Fest. But we'll throw Lanier in there. That's a free track. What's another free track that we have not tried? That we have not tried. So Tonight's just uh, going to be free tracks before we go super late model racing out of the grassroots track. Unless we throw Kern County in there, because most drivers have Kern County. I guess you could throw it in there. But we've done Kern County. If we did Kern, it would be a night race. Or Nashville. Ooh. Well, no, Nashville. I'm the thing Nashville. is, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of hype for super late model racing. I kind of want to have super late model night. No, 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 no. Well, okay, no. Uh, okay, an open uh, headline super late model race, like five flags for our own little okay, snowball. Dude. There we go. We're at Nashville. Concord, Sobo, Lanier. Where is that last free track? You have I don't to go want ahead to distract and look you. I've won three in a row, and only two other people, I'm pretty sure, have done that. Terrell Baker. TCB. Yeah. You have an opportunity to do the first something that no one's ever done before, four for four. No one's I don't ever know about that. We haven't swept the nine in a while, but I don't think anyone's ever done four for four. Yeah, the good old I, four I, for four. I don't think I'm going to get four in a row. That's, that's really pushing it. This race was pushing it. I'm, I'm surprised I won it. Well, the thing is, all the races have been close. Yeah, they have been. The, green, the restart definitely uh, made it harder with the wheel spin. I had a lot of wheel spin there at the end. And Marty almost got me. You know, a funny comment Marty made to me is if I never found out what Enter Night in America was, he would have five wins. He has finished second to me four times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we do have Irwindale. I don't know if we'll throw that one in there. I'm looking at Lanier. We have IRP, but IRP is kind of a hit or miss for us. Obviously, we could go to North Wilkesboro. Sobo's the big one. Stafford, obviously. Oh, we'll throw U do we throw USA in there? No. What about Why don't you guys like USA? It's not a fun track. It's only fun on the third. The oh, my goodness. They updated the Rockingham logo since when? That, that, that does not mean they've updated the track. We are not doing that. They have a new Rockingham logo. I did not know they made a new Rockingham logo. Uh, new Smyrna, that we won't be able to do that. Myrtle Beach, we're saving that. Martinsville, saving that. I honestly think we could do a summer super series as a race four with super late models every single night and like have a stout schedule. What do you think? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. LA Coliseum. Thank Come you, Coliseum. LA Coliseum. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one for us. There we go. Yeah, I remember I wrote it down. Didn't I write that down a while back ago? About know, like, but... if we do the Summer Super Series, the Clash would definitely have to be on it because it's a quarter mile. We'd only allow 20 drivers to race though. So qualify, uh, great job. You, we just lost our grassroots night. <laughs> we, we, just lost, we just lost our grassroots racing. Oh no. Oh no, what have we done? <laughs> you already know how this race is going to go, and I cannot I wait. really hope Lanier wins now. I don't. Come I hope Lanier LA. wins. 37%. Look at the swing oh on that vote. My oh, my. I don't goodness. think I've ever seen a vote like that. It's not grassroots, but it's a short track, and people always said it would work with a super late model. It's okay, big so enough for a super late model. It's a quarter mile. And super late race at Anderson at Slinger. Oh, no. What have we done? It's going to be a masterpiece. I cannot wait. It is going to be a straight up demo derby. I am no, so oh excited. no, I'm about to take it off. You, you lost me on demo <laughs> no, derby. No. You lo tonight's way too good of a night. Tonight is etiquette night. I like the idea of the clash. I like, oh, we may have to change that. No, we, okay. We may have to change no, that. No, we no, may no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes. No, no. Because the cla if we do the summer super series, the clash will be with the super late model, but we've had such a good night of racing. Do I want to ruin it with drivers that are overly tired on a quarter mile in a football stadium come on 60 percent of the vote that's 40 percent over 40 percent more than the next option the people want the la clash let's do it 
Forty said L clash. Except that, Mister Carlos Truther. Oh man. Anyways, uh, let's, let's do it, man. We want Lanier. I kind of want Lanier. I'm gonna be honest. I Lanier. I think the people. Who's voting the clash? <laughs> Who's voting the clash? Uh, I'm, Who's I'm doing that? Clash. I'm voting the clash. You know I, what? If you really, if you want Lanier that bad, we do it at the race seven. I think we want the clash that badly. We get 350 lights and do it as a race seven. No, no. Yes, no, that makes a lot no, more sense. No, it does not. The people want the LA clash. The people Let's want see. great racing. That's what tonight was about. And that's but why they're voting tonight the Tonight was nothing but great racing. I am full on Lanier. I am full on LA Clash. If you want a race seven at the Clash, it'd be 50 laps. It would be the first time we hit race seven. It'd have to be 350 likes. It's the only way we do it. 350 likes, we do Lanier. That makes no sense. The LA won the vote. Did it win the vote? Are, 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 yeah, man. I don't Look know. Look at that. By 40%, 41%. Clash voters are... We're not reading that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys really want the Coliseum? I do. Look, look, look what River Page said in Blue Carpet. I don't know what he said in Blue Carpet. Look what he said in Blue Carpet. All right, guess like I guess we're doing the clash. <laughs> I, I, I didn't read what he said, but I mean it's that big. Wow, you know what? I gotta stop listening to myself <laughs> because I was like, man, how cool would it be See, to do the Mr. clash? Mr. Iceberg, Mr. Mr. Iceberg, Iceberg. I love yes. <laughs> man, you call him Mr. Iceberg. <laughs> Mr. Iceberg. <laughs> that Mr. is a great. That is a great statement. Wow. I agree with him. We could have had Lanier. That is your co-commentator, and he just. <laughs> Completely disagree with you. And he didn't disagree this with me. Why, this this he, is why we I don't think he disagreed with me. This is why we love him. This I don't think he him. disagreed with me. I think you're. Wait, first, he, we even have a setup for the clash. It, it, he's my favorite commentator. Do we on have? Channel. Do we have a setup? Oh man, we do have a setup. All right. I guess we're going clash racing. The yeah. Coliseum. And if we do a summer super series, we'd have a bunch of short track races just as race four of the night. And one of the ones that were written down were the Coliseum, so this will prove if the Coliseum belongs on the schedule or not. How about that? Hell yeah, man. It's going to be a freaking blast. Just a sneak peek to what's to come. 20 race. You know that. 20 race. We bump everyone else out, so only 20 will be taking the green flag. Are you prepared for that? I'm going to miss the race, but if I miss the race, off track is going to be a lot of fun watching from the stands. All LA Coliseum races on this YouTube channel are... Aiden McConaughey yeah. finished second today in uh, his race. I believe it was at New River. Do you know where he finished? Does anyone know? NR Night in America driver Aiden McConaughey. Guess who he lost to? Hmm. Who did he lose to? Keelan Harvick. Wow. Mavic just messaged me that, so I thought it was news. So I just said, hey, let's go ahead and say it. All right. Uh, we're going there. I really hope we don't break the streak of great racing. I'm not saying the class what? doesn't give us good racing. Like, it's definitely a spectacle that we like to do consistently. 30 more likes and you get a race seven. Come on. It Come on, may viewers. be. It depends on. on the voice and depends on what I still have to do tonight. Because I got to interview a couple drivers. Because we do have a stream Sunday. And the big thing is I can't still have the stream go over into Sunday. Because then YouTube will pick it up as two Sunday streams. and It's already Sunday, man. Not for me. It's already Sunday. Not for yeah, me. It is. It is already Sunday. Nope. Man. Session is up. Passwords IDK. Hey, you messed mess, mess we'll up the see. track, man. It, it depends on... Wrong track. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put the next session up. I've realized that. <laughs> we'll put the next session up. I got to make sure I don't have two streams in the same day. So we'll see on time. It all comes down to time. If not, guess what? You'll see me in less than 24 hours. And we'll be streaming again. We might be doing some more super late model racing. Depending on uh, how it all goes down. I'm excited. I am too. This is, these are exciting times. You have a big e-ticket event coming out. Are you excited for the e-ticket? I wasn't excited about five hours ago, but I am on an absolute tear right now. Man. Why? Because you're, you're riding this high. You're riding this high of excitement. Absolutely. Yeah. 
As I said, I've joined the greats of Terrell Baker and Brady Bug. Uh, you you go four for four. Only... Four for four is right no, here. This could be a that, first. That is, All 200 I, I, plus I watching. This late at night. LA. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I was going to win the last LA Coliseum race. And Justin Champagne killed me right at the end. Guess who won that race? Gavin Austin. Is he getting an interview, by the way? Gavin Austin didn't win. I thought for the event he was going to get an interview. Uh, you know I never said that. You know you're <laughs> gaslighting right now. He's so <laughs> gas. It's crazy. Uh, he, he, I can tell you're like overly hyped right now with the three wins. I am absolutely. Is Mr. Mavic coming in for the clash? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. Uh, Mavic said he's going to win the Alabama 500. Do you disagree? Braden Mavic is not a super speedway racer. Oh. He is, he is the greatest of all time on every other form of racetrack, but he is, I, I don't see him as a super speedway racer. Would you consider, he could, he could who's wrong. the greatest super speedway racer? James Thurston, TCB, you? I think in the early NR days, I was him. But as time has gone on, it's changed. It was Chad Thurnquist. And then I don't really know. Chad, that's, Chad was the greatest at one point. That Some you people know, forget about that. Through 2023, it really, it really wasn't a set person, but... I feel like Joseph Armstrong is. He Some of you guys don't win. know Prime Chad Thurnquist. I'm telling you, like, week in and week out, you just knew he was going to be someone to get it done. Yeah, uh, but you know, I would say the best super speeder racer is Joe. Uh, he doesn't Joe? win all the time. Yeah, but I mean, well, he's, he's, he's up the there all the time. He always makes great moves. He knows how to position himself, and he's one of the few people that are, like, competent and will make a move with you. That is what makes Joe so great as a super speeder racer. I would say he is the best. That's interesting. Who, who is your best Super Speedway racer? All time? A TCB, all, I think, all, has all, the all, most all. Super Speedway wins. Am I wrong? There, there's no way. There's no way. Are you sure? I don't think you... I think you won in total two Super Speedway races. Like 20 Greatest Super Speedway... You know what? I'm going to say this. I'm not going to say Thurston. I, it's got to be... Ba I'm going to be honest. It's got to be Baker and Mother because Mother is really good on the Super Speedways. Like, Mummy has won a lot of the Super Speedways. He got his first E ticket win on a Super Speedway. He is always up front when it matters the most on a Super Speedway. He's always putting himself in position on a Super Speedway. And it's not that you don't either or anyone else. It's just the fact that I can see him doing really well. And we're going to have just enough people for the Clash. So I don't think we're going to have to be bumping anybody. All right, Brandon Mummy just sent me a stat that I was unfamiliar with. He won six straight Super Speedway races he that did. he entered last year. I want to say, because I remember when he was just on it. Like, it was Super Speedway after Super Speedway. That's why he might be a favorite heading into All right. My Alabama. apologies, Brayden Mavic. You are, you are him. You are the greatest. I, I did not, I did not, I, wow. I can't I, I say much that. on who I think is going to win because you got to see Countdown to Green for that. Jared and I will be giving our picks. But someone you have to watch out for is going to be William Schmidt, okay? I just want to point that out. This is going to be a race where if he flies under the radar, and let's say we have a long green flag run, which I think we will have, right? And then, you know what? Hits the fan, and Schmidt gets through it. He's going to be right there. He's won a couple super speedway tournaments, right? He's been in position multiple we, we times. Gotta bring, we, gotta bring back. we gotta bring back. We will. The reason why we haven't been doing it is because we have a lot of things lined up. Here's some big news. We got 20 drivers, so you ready to go? Yeah, it, it looks like it can work. I'm going to be honest. It's a bull ring. Yeah. And the big thing is, hopefully, we'll sit down with drivers and we pick out a schedule of what to do for the Super Series. I'm excited to see what that Super Series looks like. I am, too. It has a lot of potential. I agree. Well, guess what? Advance this session. We got enough drivers. Let's rock and roll. That's Daniel Moss Stellar, ladies and gentlemen. As we get ready to go green flag racing just once more. Well, you voted. The Clash at the Coliseum will be race six of the night. It's a great makeup stream. We had a lot of fun, had a lot of great racing moments. And this could be the last race of the stream. If we do hit 350, we might have to add it to the total of tomorrow. We will be starting Gen 6 at Atlanta. 
Super Speedway for Sunday night. River Page. Rolling around the racetrack. Joan Asby, Carson Freeman. Peyton Peterson. Peyton Peterson. Sean Rowe, top of the board. Back in six. Remember, he had that big run in there at Oxford. We got to do more grassroots tracks, man. It's so much fun. The idea is, once again, to show you all grassroots racing around America. And I think we've done a great job of that tonight. And who would have thought the super late model race at Phoenix was going to be so good? And we did the test. It was good. But sometimes testing doesn't full on show you how it's going to be. Mason Moriarty, a little bit of damage to his side. James Thurston. I don't know why they're all trying this huge pink car, but they are. And it looks pretty interesting. Gavin Austin, Mason Moriarty, River Page, Jonah Espy, Melodon Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to go green flag racing. Page and Ford, Cooper Glick, all the way back in 20th. Mason Moriarty, Eladon Contreras. Moriarty rolling around, he's 13th. James Thurston, Moss Teller. Lined up, ready to go green. Great racing ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. More racing tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. The voice has been saved. We're going to have an outstanding night heading into the next e-ticket event. Super late models at the LA Coliseum. How will this go? Well, only time will tell. We get ready to go, Grant. I think all the drivers are qualified in. Let's get ready to advance. Ecker, Thurston, Benton, Sean Rowe. Lined up, and we will set the clock out. 20 drivers racing at the Coliseum. Josh Lilly, River Page. Mason Moriarty. Lined up, back nose to tail. Zach Ravel. Jonah Espy. I think Josh has got something really big here. I think we're gonna have a great race. Good field, 50 laps. Who knows how this will go? I mean, it could be really good. It could be really not good. And that's the thing, another new car track combo. This is the third one of the night. They line up, James Thurston. Super late model racing from the Coliseum. Josh Louie. Chevy Toyota for the first two rows. Let's go ahead and say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for throttle up. Somebody get that one to go. And the caution is out. I don't know why they went that early. 
They're supposed to get one more lap. And we're going to go in and throw the yellow. All right, Dingo's went ahead and advanced the yellow, or advanced it, right off the gun. So those laps technically will count. And we will get ready to try it all again. Thurston, Lily, Paige, and Rowe, Kendall, and Shamela. So apparently it's a premature run, but technically does not count as a caution for our sake. Uh, caution came out before anything, but they already wrecked them all the way towards the back half. Benton, Gula, and a couple other drivers got into it. So we'll be ready to go back green. Someone one to go, ladies and gentlemen, here from the class. Lights off on the top of the pace car. Crowd on their feet from the Coliseum as we get ready to do that great thing that we love to call Lighting the fuse out in LA. Most on the bottom, Thurston. Tries to get away without a hitch, battle for third. Pace to the bottom with Josh Lilly. Most could go four for four. Pushing, shoving, Lilly, River Page. Josh Lilly nearly got lifted up there by Sean Rowe. Kendall Christensen. Christensen or Christian Kendall. Oh, you know it's late. You can tell it's late. But we still race on. Thurston versus Mosteller. This has been something that's been going on consistently. The battling back and forth. Lined up one, two, Cooper Glick. The lap machine into the outside wall. Thurston right with him. Looks top end. Nemos holds onto it. Lily, Kendall, Page. Have all dropped back, and I mean big time. Page lifts up the 38. Mosteller up and over. Caution's going to wave. Should be the end of the run. Got myself in the 12 machine. Let's see what happens. Another rocket just right in front of him. Moriarty. Outside one, Zach Ravel went upside down at Oxford. Be the one involved in this one. Caution out for the first time here for the LA Coliseum. We do not count that first delayed caution. We count it as actually starting the race under yellow. So the first yellow does fly. Thurston, Lily, Rowe, Page, Kendall, Shamela. It's a good chance you will not be seeing Moss Seller in victory lane. Oh, maybe, you know, he's still in the lead lap. You never know. Got to keep an eye on him. We've seen Wilder. Gavin Austin won the LCQ and the LA class for a community event. Lights off, top of the pace car, which means we go again. Thurston, Lily, nose to tail, back underway for the clash.
Page inside of Lilly. Bump by Rose, sideways. The saving. Unbelievable. Shadow got way too aggressive. 38 around outside wall, more spinning. The 10 machine, Peyton Peterson. Keeps it firing in the right direction. We stay green. You got to go ahead and spread them out this late at night. Lily Page, how about Ethan Eckert up the fourth? Sean Rowe, Marty Shimela. Josh Lilly in second. And earlier we were going over 200 miles per hour on a road course. Oh, trouble, caution's gonna wave again. And now we're getting up to maybe a buck here inside a football stadium. And we were looking for who caused that one. But it looks like we will not be getting it. Caution is out, let's see what happened. Uh, Jonah Espy. And McCoop was going at it. Jonah Espy, I believe, new to iRacing. Definitely new to NR Night in America. Oh, uh, he got help from Moriarty. Was stuck on the bottom. I don't think he realizes how bad the damage was. Trying to get it refired. He got stuck on the outside wall. So after the pushing and the shoving, we're down to 30 laps to go. Just a second caution of this race, but we'll get it back refired this time by. James Thurston, Josh Louie. This is the last time you saw Josh in victory lane. Lines up second, River Page, Ethan Eckert, John Rowe, Marty Shamela. They will try it again. 28 laps remaining from the Coliseum. Shoving, looking, River Page to the bottom of Lily. James Thurston. I was able to pull away. But Josh Lilly is sitting right there and would love to find a way through that 17. Twenty-six to go. Marty Shamela in fourth. Ethan Eckert in eighth. Mason Moriarty back to 12. Contreras, Cooper Glick. Lined up for position. Thurston on the bottom, Lily lined up with him. Lily, four back, I want to say maybe a car length and a half, maybe now two on the straights. He's been able to catch up to James Thurston pretty easily. But Thurston's got the lap traffic way before Josh does. Cooper Glick gets up and out of the way, mindful of the leaders. Lily looking to get through, down to 13 drivers. Mosteller two for two for going up and over. The costume will wave again. This time it will be the nail in the coffin. Jonah Espy has wrecked a lot of drivers tonight and is getting a name for the wrong reasons. I think you won't be seeing uh, maybe him for a little while. It's Marty Shemelik in the back end. People are saying, oh, but they're wrecking him. I think he's just so far off the pace, he's not able to hold on. It's picked up here. Oh. Three 
for three. That's what it's going to end on. Caution is out. 19 laps to go. Yeah, well, he's got to worry about, you know, staying out of people's way. That's the big thing. I know it's tough to stay out of others' way on a Coliseum, but I know at Oxford, a couple other tracks drivers have talked about some shenanigans. I don't think he'll be blacklisted, if that's what you guys are wondering, but definitely someone to keep an eye out for to see if it continues to happen. James Thurston, on the other hand, has been having a lot of fun. He's been leading laps. And we will try this again. 12 drivers on the racetrack. Some back down on pit road. Thurston for the restart zone, 17 laps to go for the Coliseum. Josh Lilly. Looking, peeking. Thurston pulling away. More wrecking towards the back half. Kevin Austin. Also around in the caution wave. Yeah, this is the main reason why we did not want to do the Coliseum. We were worried about this, including being late at night. We just got moved by the time. Wow. Well, it's safe to say if we do run a summer super series with the super late models, the Coliseum will not be on the schedule. I can guarantee you that. But it has proved tonight that the super late models are here to stay and definitely something to look forward to in the future. Unreal. Yeah, that's why I kind of shook my head when I saw that it was picked. have yet another restart, this time with 12 laps to go. So let's get ready for a restart. As we get ready to try it again. Lily Rowe, where did James Thurston go? He's back in seventh. 12 to go from the Coliseum. I don't know if he came to pit road or what. The Meyer towards the back half of the field and Josh Lilly is looking for his first win since the Daytona 2.4. Now he's in the next e-ticket event, wins a win. 10 to go this time by. Rowe, Duggan, Thurston, Ravel, Shamela, Page, Contreras, Peterson back in the eighth position. Sean Rowe there in second, James Thurston looking back to the bottom. Oh, center makes it work. Thurston decided to come to pit road, get fresh tires, and it's already back up in a second. It's not a lot of cars left remaining out of the 20 that started this race. Seven to go. Sean Rowe, P3. Josh Lilly, mostly pulling away. I think James got a shot at winning this race. Mainly because of the fresh tires. Back half of Lily. Five to go. Thurston inside. Couldn't make it work. Contreras outside wall, four to go. Josh, have to squeeze. James knows he can go for a lunge. There it was, and there it goes. James Thurston back top of the board.
Three to go. Coming to two. Well, tonight has been a fun night. It's proved super late model racing belongs in NR. It proves that even when you try something new and risk it all, you're bound to get something great. And maybe you may get a flop. But tonight we see the one to go, Sola Blanca, one to go out west. And a driver that chased the tail Panama Stiller for three straight races will find victory lane at the Coliseum. James Thurston wins the first ever super late model race at the LA Clash. So that's how the night ends. What can we take away? Once again, super late model racing is fun. Super late model racing is here to stay. We're gonna to continue to find grassroots tracks to display high-end racing. Tonight was all about high-end racing. We didn't get a race to have a third caution until Oxford race five. All the other races, two cautions. And that was about it. We got a schedule to make for the summer. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR. This has been NR Night in America. I'll see you tomorrow. Or in this case, if you're on the East Coast, I'll see you today at 8 Eastern, 7 Central for some more NR Night in America. Stay subscribed and notifications on so you don't miss a beat because we have an e-ticket event coming this Friday. Live from our studios in Asheville, Tennessee. We won't be long. We'll see you once again. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen.